time for Mac Break Weekly, episode 223. Andy Anako is here. Alex Lindsay's here. And from a great visitor from the north, Mr. Ray Maxwell. We'll talk about the new Richard Branson iPad app and a whole lot more. Mac Break Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 223, recorded November 30th, 2010. Stick it in your ear. This episode of MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by. Go to Meeting. Improve your conference calls and keep everyone on the same page when you share your screen with Go to Meeting. For your free 30-day trial, visit gotomeeting.com slash macbreak. And by audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash macbreak. And by squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off the lifetime of your new account, go to squarespace.com slash MacBreak and use the offer code MacBreak. It's time for MacBreak Weekly. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is in studio with us, Mr. Alex Lindsay, fresh from his arrest by four CHP officers. No, you weren't arrested. I wasn't arrested. They were escorting you. Yes, they were escorting me to uh, the, the prison. No, no. They... Um, uh, we were doing a camera shoot, so we did a live live streams on Saturday and Sunday. One from a camera car, another one from a studio uh, through the live U box. But and we, we were watching it. The we stream. were watching, which I was, was really watching. It was so cool. It was really fun. We had two witness cameras attached to Kelly's uh, all in one truck. You know, his big camera car, and so um, and so we had the, we had them stream. We had them going into a into an HS two thousand, which is this uh, data video mixer, and um, and then that was running into the live stream. And then we were uh, streaming that live and people saw cops, but we had to, so if you're shooting uh, and you want to stay within the parameters of the law in most locations, you need to get a police escort to make sure that you don't hit somebody else's car with a jib. That makes sense. It's the little things in life, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so we, uh, we hired four cop cars. Um, but you, you need to, and, but, but the chat room didn't know that ahead of time. Yeah, 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 exactly. So they, and I'm watching in the chat room and we're doing another show. He's getting arrested. And they said, oh my God, he's getting arrested. We all went to it because we, we you know, you, we didn't have any audio. And then I saw the next day I was watching while well, beautiful jib shot in the studio. Oh, that was, was gorgeous. It? Oh, it was we gorgeous. really we're we're doing more and more of these streams and we're having so much Pixel fun with Core them. Pixelcore.com and yes. then but follow either at Pixelcore or at Alex Lindsay and uh, he'll, you'll tweet when there's Yeah, something. and right now w because it's still kind of really cutting edge for us to be to be doing this we're kind of telling people like a half an hour before we're doing it or right before we're doing it hey we're turning the cameras on uh, eventually as we go into next spring especially as we get the new studio area um we'll be giving people a lot more warning that we're streaming um live shoots and get you know but right now you just kind of have to follow us on twitter and then we'll we'll, we'll tell That's you fun. what's happening yeah it's really it's, fun. it's a lot of fun yeah uh also with us today really glad to have him back mr ray maxwell formerly of maxwell's house he's our expert our resident expert on anything and everything <laughs> Hi, Leo. It's good to have you, Ray, from Vancouver. And you're bundled up, so I suspect it's a little chilly now. In, uh, in, uh, we ha we had North. record lows in November. We got down to minus 6 Celsius. Wow. Which, uh, that's cold. Which is really unusual for Vancouver. Yeah, that's ch ch chilly. Well, great to have you back, Ray. Also with us from, uh, I imagine it's a little chilly in Dedham right now. Andy, not Dedham, that's where Paul Thorat is, but Dedham area. Andy exactly. and Notco. Dedham, Dedham adjacent is what we call it. From people who can't afford to live in <laughs> Dedham, Massachusetts. Well, we can dream and we can, we can scrub the toilets of those who work in Dedham and afford to live. It's great to have you back from the Chicago Sun-Times and his own website, www.cwob.com. Uh, let us see here, my friends. Why is that so slow? Let me speed up our switch here. Now let's try it. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's more around the horn? <laughs> <laughs> That's called the whip. No pepper ball in this part. That's called the whip when they do that in the television. Uh, I, you know, I haven't really been following the Mac News. Anything happen uh, lately? I'll tell you one thing. The, uh, the iPad got eclipsed as the most adopted consumer electronics device of all time. Can you guys guess 
What new consumer electronics device sold more in its first months than the iPad? Uh, would it be the Xbox or the Kinetic? Connect. Connect. I'm. I'm. Uh, I, I can't say it because it's a gift for somebody. But I'm. I'm getting one. Not for me. But it's pretty for fun. Else. I don't know. I still don't know if it's got if it's got that Wii issue where you. It's really cool at first and then you kind of get tired of it. Right. But uh, it's pretty fun I mean, to play. I've, I've I've talked to, po to folks in the Xbox team at uh, Microsoft and. That's they they're different from the normal Microsoft people. Like they you'll really talk to are. somebody, yeah, because they, they, they not only do they have great ideas, but they actually do things with them, and they know what they're going to be doing with them a year from now. They don't just do the one demo, uh, and so I haven't reviewed it yet because I'm saving it for. I, I'm I'm pretty sure that pretty soon there's going to be. You're going to be able to do more than just box with it. I think they're going to really try to make use it to elevate the Xbox from a game console with certain like home computer features to a really interesting way of interacting with the computer. Uh, well, not to I, make this the Microsoft show, but that there is that rumor going around now. TechCrunch has it this morning that Microsoft is working with on deals to make it a television device. Well, you know what? I, I just yeah. feel like in, in five years from now, or, t or maybe ten years from now, they're going to go, yeah, that company used to make uh, they used to make this software for PC. <laughs> what's you know, an, what's an operating system, basic. Daddy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <they're, laughs> yeah. Uh, well, good, good on them. I know, I'm saying, they reinvented I mean, this, themselves. This is, They've got the, the, uh, I think absolutely. the new phone is, is, is pretty competitive. I think uh, the Connect is obviously competitive. Two and a half million uh, units wow. sold in the fourth, first month. Not that the iPad is not hugely successful. In fact, Cyber Monday yesterday uh, I don't have the, the numbers in yet, but the stories are the very strong sales said, of the iPad. I think that they're saying that the iPad right now is averaging out at 1.2 million units a month. Yeah. That's what I read. Yeah, so but, so we're going to get very and, close to 10 and, million for the end of the, and, by the end and of the And let's end. point out that that was really an unknown product. In fact, if anything, the only thing we knew about tablet computing was it was a flop. It had been a flop for a decade. Right. So, uh, you know, I remember Gruber and others speculating, well, there, there must be some secret sauce in here because there's no way that a tablet's going to be worth it. Uh, Apple putting any energy into it, and here we are, in still not, still in the first year for a few more months of the uh, of the. We, we have to look back. I think we made pr predictions. I don't even remember what my prediction was. What I had was a, your your bet. I had a what bet with uh, John C. Dvorak that it would sell in the first twelve months five million units, right. and I think a lot of people thought that was very uh, bullish. Yep. I think mine was like eight points. I think you were in the eights. Yeah. I don't remember what Andy said, but I was little. I was under five. I didn't. I I thought that it was going to be like the Mac 128, where it would definitely establish a beachhead that you could launch the the 2011 invasion off of. But I didn't think it would be selling 10 million. Boy, was I wrong. Yeah, amazing. I mean, really a success. We all were under. Even the extremely bullish 8.8 .8 million. Yep, was low. Yep. Well, it has it has completely changed my reading habits. I mean, I, I am now... Were you, you a know, Kindle can, guy, Ray, before? No. I, well, remember, oh. Kindle was late coming to Canada. Right. And so I had the iPad by the time Kindle came to Canada. So I got the Kindle app on the iPad. And I have to say, I, I love it. Uh, I mean, I, I, I read a lot. And uh, Chapter's uh, bookstore, that's just two blocks from me, doesn't see me very often anymore. Yeah. I won't buy paper anymore. No more paper, no more plastic. No. But you use Kindle, right? I use Kindle on the iPad. Ah, I don't use a Kindle. Well, I that's where Kindle has a real advantage because you can buy it on one on all the devices. You don't have to buy multiple copies of a book. I mean, what yeah. I found is a lot of the technical manuals, um, because some of the companies haven't been able to sort out their uh, rights issues with Apple or, right. or their sales issues with Apple, that a lot of the technical manuals that I want are only available on the Kindle and not available on the iBook store. So I'm still buying stuff on Kindle, and it's mostly technical manuals. About, I don't even consider the iBook store, because if it's available on the Kindle, I'm going to buy it on the well, Kindle. Well, I, I, th I think that it's a, it's a much better experience. I have a couple of Really? Yeah. You like, yeah, I think you like the, iBook yeah, better? Yeah, Andy, it's, it's a better software... Yeah, exactly. I, I enjoy the reading experience better than that. I also I enjoy the note-taking experience better than that. Uh, I do wish, though, that uh, iBooks were available on more devices, though, because yeah. I, th I that's think a nice it, well, well, actually, actually the biggest limitation is, though, is that if there's a book that's out that I've heard of, chances are about 10 times better that I'm going to be finding it on the Kindle store than on the iBook yeah. store. So that's the first place I look, but I will almost always wind up buying it on Amazon. I, the, other, the other big plus there is if you buy it uh, on the Kindle, uh, and you buy a new device, it moves with you. Right. Right. And and I uh, I find that what 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 I've been made, but I don't know when this actually happened because it, for a long time I didn't think I could really view PDFs very well on the you know when it first came out with the iBook you know um, mm -hmm. with iBooks and now if I'm in Safari and I see and I download a PDF I can say view it in iBooks 
and it just immediately puts it into that library automatically, mm. um, and which is what I do. We, when we're doing production, I, I make sure that the iPad has all the manuals for every piece of hardware that we have, you know, which is, that's changed the entire uh, reality of I'm, what we're I'm, doing. I'm, I've been, uh, you know, playing with uh, Ruby and the Ruby on Rails learning. Uh, I, I, I've learned it before, but relearning it again. <laughs> and I had a lot of old Ruby and Rails books, and uh, Ruby and Rails have both been updated considerably. I didn't even consider buying them in hardcover or, yeah. or paperback. Yeah. I just went right to uh, the Kindle store. Almost all of them are available. And it turns out that's a great way to do it is put it on the iPad yep. next to your Mac. I mean, it's a good way to do technical. I, I still like to, be honest, listen to Audible. I uh, prefer to listen to Audible than read. But if a book is not available on Audible, then Kindle, then yeah. uh, then then paper. For me, like fiction, yeah, we've already said that. Fiction is movies for me. Nonfiction is is Audible, and technical is Kindle. Like that's kind of like yeah. the you know yeah. that's how I kind of view well, my the, stuff. Apple the stores really on Black Friday sold eight point eight uh, tablets per hour each store. <laughs> each store. Wait, eight point eight per minute or per hour? No, no. Each store. Oh, oh each store. Okay. <laughs> you can't sell eight, eight tablets a minute in a store. <laughs> you can in the San Francisco store. Yeah, you might be able to. Places packed. Uh, also, according to uh, this is to uh, Gene Munster, uh, Piper Jaffrey analyst. He said uh, his teams watched Apple retailers for seven hours and came away with this conclusion. This is an interesting statement. And you know, these guys are looking for that you know soundbite. The Mac, the iPad is the Mac of the masses. It's a good soundbite. Yeah, don't know what it yeah. means. No, that's 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 something that I that I thought of uh, a few months ago because I, I realized that oh, I, I sure you pictures. Did. Oh yes. I, I, <laughs> okay, I got I got a picture in my <laughs> iPhone roll that's dated because I was writing a piece about it. I think I was I was at the I was at the pizza place that I often set up shop at. First 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 lesson to people who are in like food retail. If you open up a pizza place and the pizza is good and the and there's unlimited drink refills, don't add free Wi-Fi because you're going to lose tables. You, you know, are, there's going to be this guy live there. Right. Exactly. I'll, I'll I'll buy my two slices and then I'm there for 4 hours. Yeah. But anyway, so so I was there and I real I had my I had my uh, my iPad on the on the little Griffith stand. I had my my Bluetooth keyboard and I'm actually doing real work on it. And I suddenly like look at it and I realize that what does this resemble more than a 128K Mac with that little like mm. That that form factor, the one no, disc good point, yeah. in front of it, the yeah. same size. I wound up like downloading a picture of like the original you know, Mac 128 Hello uh, promo pic and putting that on the screen and then just <laughs> taking cute. a picture because it just reminded me so much That's of cute. this is a, also well, also when you think about the original goals of the Mac that was supposed to be a computer that everybody could afford that would cost way 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 less than a thousand dollars. The priorities that Steve Jobs put on it were going to be that okay, it's not going to matter that we can't expand it. It's not going to matter. There's not a whole lot of apps for it because this is the sort of device we're trying to make. And so they've succeeded in making for most people let's throw in you know a hundred bucks for the keyboard and an easel. Now they've built a six hundred dollar to one thousand dollar computer that doesn't run every app out there, but doesn't have to and you once you buy it that's pretty much all you're going to do with it but it's making a lot of people like me really really happy that's the goal 20 years later 25 years later they finally met it i actually said that <laughs> i'll take credit for that i said well, that I, uh, I said that leo laporte said that <laughs> when no but i said that I and i remember it. sitting in front of the apple uh, announcement of the ipad and said this is <laughs> this is the computer steve jobs always wanted to make this was if if he could have made this instead of mac 128 this is what he would have made because it is it's the computer for the masses it's very easy i actually would retract that today because it while it is a great accessible computer uh, it isn't quite um, a replacement for a computer. I think it depends on who who they. I mean, we, yeah, of course, it depends my, on who, but well, it's not a full replacement for no. computers. My point. No, I don't think so. And and but I do think I, yeah, I look at the way my. So if he had, if they had made this instead of the Mac in 1984, it would have changed computer. It would have changed things, and I don't know if it would have changed things as uh, for the better. No, it would have been. I think this it is a, been, this is an accessory. This well, is not, it, it, remember what the world was like in 1984. Uh, I mean, first of all, Reagan was president, so everything's going to stink. Uh, second thing, <laughs> oh, though. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> there we go. Hello. <laughs> See, I thought, I thought we'd get a little pepper ball. Send your letters to Indianatko. From sea to shining sea. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, at least the that, was, that, that was a world that. in which you really your your entire computing world was there on your desktop. If you did not have it there on your desk with you, you could not do it. Whereas the iPad can right. do what it does and do, do it so inexpensively because 
it can live off of getting things off the internet and having an app store that's elsewhere that you don't have to really find some guy who'll mail you a cassette tape and a pad in a padded envelope. Uh, so yeah, something like this would never work. Remember that for 20, when was the first time that you heard about uh, like uh, Ellison or other people trying to develop like network computers that uh, the, these thin computers that do nothing but uh, run apps that are hosted by a remote server, none of them were able to work chiefly because again, you needed to have everything there on the table with you. Well, I, I, you know, I am thinking about an iPad for my wife because she's due to replace her computer. She has a very old eMac, and uh, I'm saying, you know, you got to get a new computer. It's a, you know, power PC. It's really out of date. And uh, rather than get an iMac, I have considered because all she does is uh, browsing on the web and email, and uh, you know, uh, if I get her an external Bluetooth keyboard so she can, you know compose things uh you know it really does almost everything she wants to do and my, yeah. my 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 uh my wife's parents you know she was like oh we were gonna get thinking, she's thinking about getting an ipad and then she wasn't sure if she wanted to get an ipad because she was looking at the way she, her parents use it and she goes well they got files everywhere and they, they all they do is text documents and, and surf the web and i was like that's what those are that's the perfect person <laughs> to have an ipad it's gonna <laughs> yeah. put your file keep your files from getting all messy because they're all going to go into one right. little place and all you're doing is making files and you know it's, it's like i it's, thought it's, that too with my wife because you know she doesn't know that there's a desktop remember i told you i right. I, she, <laughs> I, I closed some of the apps and she said what's that i said well, well that's your desktop she said what are all those things i said well those are all the th things you've <laughs> saved under the desktop was, <laughs> she said, oh she doesn't want a file system Right. She doesn't need a file system. Now, interesting, I got her an iPad. No interest in the iPad. She's still using the 13-inch uh, MacBook. So mm -hmm. I guess, it, I don't know. She likes a keyboard. I don't know. But but there you go. It's Except, interesting. Well, I, that, I had, I had, go ahead. I had one, one, one last one thing that was interesting to me. Uh, this is the day that, rather, this is the week earlier today that I, I packed up, like, the finally Apple's, like, 11-inch MacBook Air. Uh, and it kind of made me modify some of the things I've been saying about the iPad a little bit. Uh, I know that I know now that a lot of it was just the simple fact that it's a powerful computer that's really light and really thin. Because I, I did find that I was leaving the house without my iPad a lot more frequently over the past month than I had when I didn't have uh, w uh, th that nice, tiny, little 11-inch 11, 11 MacBook Air possible, uh, uh, handy. Uh, now, to be fair, uh, there are more instances which I was leaving the house with both the MacBook Air and the iPad because the iPad will always be my book reader and always be my I'm on the train. I want to read something or do something while I'm uh, while I'm uh, in transit from someplace. But let's not discount the. I, have, I really had to make sure it really was an illustration for me that a lot of it wasn't really the, the technology. It really wasn't the multi-touch. It was the simple fact that we finally have a computer that's this thin and this light that yeah. you can just take with you. That runs the Mac yeah. OS, whether you want it or not. And I think it's interesting, though. I think I do think there's a before and after there. I mean, because I, I, as a person who owns an iPad, I keep on looking at that at the Air, which is one of the few few Mac, uh, few Apple products I haven't bought. And while I'm really excited about it, I, you know, I have a 13 inch, so it's I already have something kind of small, and I have an iPad. I've got a couple of those, and I'm just kind of like, oh, do I really need another computer? You know, that that's small, like it's not hefty that has you know that uh, you know like a 17 inch or something like that. So. Uh, I do think if you have an iPad, I think that they are very close. I think this, the the eleven inch and the and the iPad are in this very close realm where they're you, you really. I think if I didn't have the iPad, I would definitely buy the eleven inch. Yeah, well, a close a close friend of mine uh, just got a uh, MacBook Air, the new one for his wife, who's a lawyer and uses her computer very heavily. And uh, she had the old MacBook Air, and the new one with the SSD drive. He says is night and day that the yeah. your you know, uh, while it may not have that high of of, of uh, CPU power, uh, he said your experience is just lightning yeah, fast. It's because of the SSD. It's all you need. Yeah. It turns right. out that it's not the CPU; it's the uh, it's the I/O that really makes a difference. Right, yeah. and and they love it. Mm -hmm. She just thinks it's fantastic. Oh, I, I'm I'm deeply, powerfully, and emotionally. I'm attached. trying not to touch Leos very often. I don't want to open it. I don't really want to feel it. I don't want to know anything about it. Yeah, I don't want to taste it now. I was gonna taste it. I was gonna lick it, but now that Leo's licked it, it's like it's like licking someone's candy bar. I mean, you know, once it's, once it's been. Why do you licked, think I licked it? Uh, I'm gonna do other things too. Then you'll never touch it. No, no, no. So I think it was interesting that Munster and his uh, and his minions uh, actually just sat in Apple stores with little checkbooks. I'm surprised the Apple stores <laughs> let him going. Hmm, there goes another one. Hmm, there goes another one. Seven hours. Hmm, there goes another one. So 8.8 .8 iPads. An hour, 8.2 max in general an hour. Now, this is per store. How many Apple stores are there? A thousand? I don't know. How many are there? are quite a few. That's a lot of 
Max and a lot of iPads, a little bit more iPads. He says, uh, despite comments that, quote, the 11-inch MacBook Air has been flying off the shelves, Max sales were down compared to the uh, same, uh, you know, thing that he did last year. He said Apple retailers sold, oh, see, I think this is uh, well within the margin of error. Instead of 8.2 Max an hour, 8.3 Max Yeah, that's an hour. no way. No, come <laughs> on. What do, you, what do you think this is, a science? Apple will eventually release some numbers. Oh, sometimes they actually tell you exactly what they did over Black Friday, for instance. Do you think the price cuts? I mean, they, you know, they've always been anemic. The quote Black Friday sales at uh, Apple.com. $41 on some iPods, $101 on some Macs. Mm. Kind of anemic. Yeah. There wasn't but enough. since I, they never cut, it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. I mean, if you're going to pick a day and you're going to do it sometime for Christmas anyway, it, it, it makes sense. I don't think it makes sense to... It's kind of like when the, when the furniture dealer says, and we'll pay the sales tax. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's on the order of that. Right. It's like, it's like let's just say you could give an 8% <laughs> yeah. discount. Yeah. Yeah. We'll pay the sales tax. Or 9.6 in San Francisco. <laughs> well, that's oh. true. It's quite a bit in some areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For whatever it's worth, I've just gone onto the Apple's, the online Apple store, and if you try to order an 11-inch online, it will still ship within one to three business days. Yeah, so not sold out. There's no, there's no backlog. There's no, no backlog. Now, have you heard reports? Eric Lanigan uh, uh, had a 13-inch, and he said his screen was terrible. He couldn't view it on an angle and so forth. I have uh, the 11-inch screen is is as good as any screen I've ever used. It's very it's just good. because he was wearing polarized glasses. It could be <laughs> he was wearing he was wearing his uh, his Ray Bans. Yeah, have you heard any issues about? Uh, no, I haven't. I do think the 11 is the, is the one you want, though. Don't you think? I, I agree. I love the 11. I don't think you need bigger. It's The resolution on this screen is the same as on the 13. The only difference is it's 16.9. Yeah. So it, seemed, it feels short. Also, right. there's some apps that don't that aren't uh, aren't used to that 69 aspect ratio. Uh, the For me, like once you get into the price of the 13 inch, I start, or at least for me, I start to think, oh dear, now I'm, now I'm, it really is, I really am faced with the fact that for $1,400, $1,500, I can have a MacBook Pro, a MacBook Pro with all these extra features and it weighs a little bit more and it's not, doesn't take up more space in my bag, but it's a lot thicker. Or I could have the same amount of money and give up so much just for thinness. Oh dear, what should I do? <laughs> they, at, at, that was an, a challenge on Black Friday because the if you had an upgraded MacBook 11 inch MacBook Air, it was the same price as the base model 13. So you would you could in, in effect say, well, which screen should I get? But I think 9.99. Don't my actually I'd like to hear what you guys think. My opinion is. Don't even put more RAM in or anything. Just get the stock 999 MacBook Air 11. Absolutely. I think it's going to do exactly Absolutely. what you want, right? Part, yeah. I don't think you need four gigs. I, I put four gigs in, but I, don't, I, I think that was probably a mistake. On the other How hand, does it if, run Final Cut? <laughs> <laughs> there's the problem. It's people like you who put Final Cut on this thing. <laughs> However, I did, I, what I did do is put Lightroom on it. I just don't store the catalog or the photos on there because it's only right. a 64 gig drive. But yeah. I don't see any reason why I couldn't use it to control Lightroom. Mm hmm well, I mean, I can think of one other case of where four gig is nice. Uh, uh, again, my friend who just bought one, uh, his, uh, his lawyer wife, has to run Windows and and oh, runs parallel. not on this. Don't please. <laughs> I know, I know <laughs> I that's criminal, you. but you know, but there the extra memory would be nice. Yeah, I'm not sure I would want to really. Yeah, don't get. <laughs> yeah, I would say don't get this if you think you might want to run Windows, unless you run it in Boot Camp. Although I hear there are issues getting it working. Uh, yeah. Well, Camp. she only runs it infrequently, but very occasionally because yeah. other people in her office, you know, the rest of that story. You, uh, for you know, us, for us, Windows it's a standard runs great. By the way, I just want to point this out on the uh, eight-core Westmere processors with eight gigs of RAM. Man, does Windows <laughs> run well? <laughs> you know, our that's our standard install now is Windows. We have Windows Seven and and uh, and OS Ten on. I did a boot on every camp, machine, and then I put par uh, Parallels or I can't remember which Fusion, and it worked. It's great. I, I uh, you know when I plug a lot in, of the apps we have have trouble with either Fusion or Parallels. I mean, we just it, they're they're just a little bit. You they know, want, they want too you know much of the computer. A good test for me uh, is this Windows Phone, uh, and I plug it in, and I told VMware Fusion that when I plug in a Windows Phone, that goes to Windows. It's running in coherence mode, so that means it. It just pops up the Zune. It's like I'm running wow. the Zune software on the Mac. Mm -hmm. You need a lot. I mean, folks, you need a lot of resources. You need fast processors. You need, and I gave four, I gave four whole processors to the Windows uh, and four gigs of RAM. But then it's great. And this is running and it's syncing and doing all that. And I'm not leaving the Mac. Right. But that's, I, I wouldn't do that on there. <laughs>
I think that's – now, there, you're, you're right, Ray. If you think you're going to want the Ram, get it, because there's no – I don't know of any way to upgrade the Ram. For a while, you could upgrade the solid-state drive, but now Apple's telling uh, the company that was – it's called Photofast. Photofast – that was making these 256 – and I wish I'd bought one. Yeah. 256 gig. <laughs> you know, Apple is, is creating a whole new push. You know, it used to be that when, when you release a product, oftentimes you can put it out at a sale price, like for a limited time only when we release mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Now you don't even do a sale price. If you, if you release a product, you can just say, good until Apple takes it away. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, and so people are going to rush to buy this kind of stuff just because they just want to make sure they can get a hold of it. It's kind of cool that you could just slot that in there. Yeah. yeah 256 gig upgrade kit. That so turns these, can, these guys into a monster. You need a special uh, Torx uh, wrench for just the outside. Once you're inside, it's pretty standard. And um, it also is faster because I think it, it had a better uh, control. Oh, wait, did it. you see the read, the read write on that? Uh -huh. You could record... I mean, you could record uh, like uncompressed. You sound like you're having another moment with your air right now, Leo. I want it. Uncompressed. It's uncompressed. Is, is this is 190 on the megs a second. <laughs> Not just 200. Uh, Apple uh, said, "Please." They called them last week. Said, "Please stop selling this," and they're complying. I think they said, "Hey, you know, we understand that you are. You're gonna need to turn this." Hey guys, <laughs> if you have any leftover, yeah, just Good contact luck. me. I won't mention it. You know, Apple hates me anyway. It won't matter. We'll say we built it ourselves. Yeah, I'll take the label off. Uh, you know, it looks like it's a, like a SIM card that you'd snap in, only the connector, instead of being on the bottom, is on the side of it. At what point do you really disconnect from the price here? Oh, uh, what was it, the price, by the way? I should have. Was, I should've, probably thousands, right? No, but wasn't it in the, in the mid-hundreds something? something? Really? Like five, it, it wasn't like a $100 upgrade. It was... $500 uh, upgrade, something. Yeah, exactly. That's not bad. We still oh, for, for for 128 gigs of storage? No, 256 gigs. All six. Oh, no, no, I'm saying for an additional 128 gigs oh. of storage on what you what you already had. To me, that's oh dear. I mean, how yeah, I how much? Right. How, yeah. how many problems could if if I if I go more ab abstract here and I say that I want to solve every problem and every complaint I might possibly have with my MacBook Air and I've got $500 in which to do it. Is it going to be I'm going yeah, to spend $500 right. to double the storage or is it going to be I'm going to get a I'm going to buy myself an iPod Touch for some things. I'm going to buy myself a nice external drive for for these other things. Uh, am I going to take me and two people out to a really great dinner and then a movie and have them tell me how wonderful my new MacBook Air is? No, yes. you're right. You're right. You're right. In fact, 64 gigs is plenty. I did. I had a, a problem. Well, it's not I don't know, plenty. But well, it's it's plenty if you it's if you just me. if you remember it and say, okay, I'm not going to put all my music right. on it. Or, exactly. I'm not going to put. I'm going to. You know, I have an external drive that I use for my photos. I'm not going to. Well, and I think that treat, some of that becomes you treat, like a, you treat like an iPad that can run Mac OS. Apps. Yeah, there you go. Well, I think some of that becomes more possible uh, as you start to have all these um, devices able to interact with a, with a local server. You know, in your house and in other places that you're going, you know, where you can stream a lot of this stuff uh, through AirPlay or whatever, where you're, you're able to kind of move things around. I know I'm kind of wrestling right now with in my house of being able to kind of get everything integrated so that the TVs and the computers and everything else are accessing a central library of all the music and, and movies. I, ha I don't have it completely finished, but like a Mac Mini that's kind of serving up all of that stuff. You know, I brought, I, um, uh, kind of, for my birthday, I decided to give a gift. So uh, a kid who's a friend of the family, he's 18 years old, he's not been feeling well lately. I brought him an iPad, and uh, I didn't know what a Mac kit, Mac fanatic he was. <laughs> and literally in five seconds, all of a sudden I hear music coming out of his stereo system. He had already figured it out. He had Airshare already <laughs> working. He said, well, I have an Apple TV. So, And then he started, and I had put 24 on here, and he starts playing 24 <laughs> on the big screen. Well, I guess, well, okay, good. I'm glad. I see ya. <laughs> I feel the pork, and I'm a tech expert. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told him. I said... Wow, I, I've been meaning to, to do that. I, uh, <laughs> you know, for me that's been. You know, the, it was so easy. I mean, literally, he had he he got it in his hands, and he goes tit tit tit, and it's playing. And and that is why I'm finally going to break down and buy the new. I mean, I had the old Apple TV, and I just it's worth. Like, getting, I, I didn't know it was compelling. Do, if you're trying to do that, yeah. And then you use remote on the iPad. Yeah. So I'm I'm getting one. If, if that's what you wanted, I was blown away. The sound was great. Yeah. Um, the picture wasn't so great because I bought 24 back when it was a uh, standard def. That's how they get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I have to rebuy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I mean that's that's very. I tell you, it, if you want a product demo, that's a great product demo. I mean, yeah. within five seconds, he's got AirShare, and it's it just works. I've I've been using the Apple TV nonstop since I got it, yeah. and <laughs> and again, compare and contrast to the drawer that the old Apple TV has been in for like a year and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm looking at. Solid state, baby. No moving <laughs> parts.
<laughs> no tubes in this one. No tubes in here, baby. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break, come back with more. We've got the great Ray Maxwell with us. So nice to have you back, Ray, from beautiful Vancouver. I'm going to start doing a regular thing with Ray on the radio show. He's going to be, you know, what did I call, what were we going to call you, Ray? Explainer in chief. Explainer in chief. <laughs> if there's a technology that it does, you know, is complex, you know, I think maybe solid state drives would be good for the next one. Yeah. Have him come on excellent. and explain how it works. The explainer in chief, Ray Maxwell. Andy Anako here from the Chicago Sun Times and also. Alex Lindsay, our friends at uh, Citrix have a great product for you. We'd like to tell you about Go To Meeting. Holidays would be a good time to get Go To Meeting if you've tried it on the iPad. That is so cool. I was sitting out in the backyard here because we, our, you know, our Wi-Fi goes out to the backyard. I guess it would work on 3G. I didn't even try that. But I was sitting on the Wi-Fi in a meeting. I didn't tell the meeting attendees. You know, I just, oh yeah, I'll, I'll be at your meeting. And um, what I forgot is that this has a microphone and speakers on it. So I didn't need the phone. I actually hung up the phone, and I'm now doing everything you need to meet. In, is in this in this, in this iPad. They can hear me. I can hear them. It was a it was kind of a revelation to me. I can meet anywhere with Go to Meeting. You can't start meetings with the iPad, but you can on the Mac or Windows. And then your attendees can attend on the iPad, which is very cool. It's a free application. Go to Meeting is uh, online meeting made very very easy, and cross platform too, which. I think we Mac people appreciate it. If you go to gotomeeting.com slash MacBreak, you can try this free for 30 days. It does include phone and voice over IP teleconferencing is built in. You can set up the meeting ahead of time, send them a link. And what's great is it also, you know, you're not remembering it. Once you get everybody in and you invite everybody, what we, we use it every week um, and uh, uh, for meetings. And you, once you set it all up, it's constantly sending out reminders you to don't everyone to, to make sure that everyone remembers They're and all they there. have all their login yep. information and yep. they have everything that they need and you don't have to think about it. And that's turned out to be a big chunk of why it's valuable to us. I was on a conference call this morning and I'm, I, you know, I admit I, I, I dozed. And it's really easy to doze. A go to meeting is what, what, what brings it up to the level where, oh, this is engaging. I'm at, I mean, at least I'm watching something. If you're doing a sales presentation and you have that PowerPoint or keynote presentation, you really want to show the client that or maybe the web design or whatever it is you, you can't do it over the phone you got to use go to meeting it really makes a big big difference they get much more engaged and I, I think that's really you know the key to this is keep everybody on the same page keep them involved the move meeting moves faster and you get more done it's also good you can collaborate uh, on a document both of you can work on it all of you i think you have 15 people in this meeting um you could do product demos training if you don't if you have the software on your system they don't but you're training them you could say, okay, th that's how you do it. Now you try it. And they, they're using it on your machine. It's pretty amazing. If you're doing conference calls, bring them to life with GoToMeeting. Try it free for 30 days. GoToMeeting.com slash MacBreak. i got to remember that for this uh, conference call that I do. I don't start it or it would be a GoToMeeting call. It was so boring this morning. <sighs> oh, God. It was painful. But I did get uh, quite a bit of writing done and <laughs> worked on the show. I always just want to know when I'm on conference calls, I just want to know where the mute is so that I can continue I, well, to clean my barbecue. I, I did do it. Uh, you know, I used the Google chat with the headphones, just like the ones, uh, you know, we use on the show. Press that mute button and I'm typing away. I'm going, hey, honey, what's uh, for dinner tonight? You know, and they, they think you're meeting. You're not, you know. I should, probably shouldn't say that out loud. It was a great, <laughs> really enjoyed that meeting. <laughs> so, it was riveting. Cultimac I've, has a, 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 a article on the uh, reliability survey, the PC world. Now, you got to figure PC world, they cover PCs. They're probably, uh, they're probably saying, oh, which, you know, is it Lenovo? Is it Dell? Which, uh, which is the best reliability and service in the industry? And uh, guess who? Guess who? By, like, a landslide. According to uh, PC world, Apple smoked the competition in every category, desktops, notebooks, even smartphones. When it comes to smartphones, the lowest rims BlackBerry scoring worse than average in every ease of use question. They did, Actually, let me show you the graphic because um, it's kind of a, I have to drag it over here. It's kind of a pretty, uh, pretty graphic. Apple and HTC's tops in smartphone ease of use. Easy to set up. You know, it's Apple, HTC, and then it's down from there. Uh, Rim didn't do so easy well. Easy to browse internet. Now, you know, easy is really the wrong word. I mean, a, a, a capable browser is the key, frankly. Easy to locate and play back music and video. Satisfaction with quality of phones. I'm sorry, with phones, uh, photo and video quality. 
And uh, again, Apple, HTC, Motorola, Palm, you know, those are Android phones, the HTC and Motorola's. Palm, Nokia, Samsung pretty low, which surprises me. Mm, me too. Because uh, that's an Android phone. I, love, I, I, love, I have two Samsung phones. Uh, I, think, uh, I think they do a great job of uh, improving the Android interface. So that oh, I agree. Me. Yeah, I agree. And, and the, the Samsung Focus, the Windows phone, is, is a nice build, very high quality. LG and RIM down at the bottom there, too. Overall satisfaction with ease of use, it's Apple and Motorola. I think those Motorola users are Droid users, probably, right? I can't think of what other Motorola handsets, unless they're StarTac users or something. <laughs> you know, I love my StarTac phone. I think these are all smartphones. Oh, easy to press buttons. <laughs> yeah. Those, those red always... LEDs really <laughs> pop out at you as you dial. You know, that's only a matter of time. <laughs> I wish I had a... Uh, why can't I just have a phone that makes calls? I, You know, I, I, I every once in a while I see a non-smartphone, and it's just it's just very odd now. You know, no, like in, in California, you just look over and you're like, wow. And yet it's still, you know, there's still 80 percent of the market i think it's mostly outside the u.s but they're still well outside of, of california market. outside of san yeah. francisco yeah. you know what i mean it's i think we're just kind of in a bubble <laughs> yeah. let me ask the uh the chat room there must be somebody in the chat room who has a standard old feature in our phone. Chat room? no maybe not mm, maybe candy not. bar phone <laughs> don't you isn't it a little embarrassing when you pull it out <laughs> i notice when i'm around somebody and they pull maybe it's because it's me but then they pull out, uh, you know, a candy bar phone. They they always go, oh, I'm I'm gonna get an I'm getting a new one. I this oh. is, uh, <laughs> you know what was funny is I, I go ahead. I'm sorry. The, the the funny part is that when you get those text messages from that one person who says "Tunks for to meet you," like, <laughs> oh, honey, you don't have a real keyboard. Do oh, I'm so sorry. Look at this. The chat room is loaded, loaded with people who have feature phones, and they and many of them say, "No, not embarrassed at all. I'm proud to save yeah, money." Photo photo of you with that feature phone holding up a, t a newspaper or a magazine or a website from today. I call shenanigans. Yeah. You know what, what, what was funny for me though? I was talking to a uh, I was talking to a producer a couple weeks ago. And Chewy in our chat room says, you poor saps. What software are you using to chat with? G -E -E? No, I, I, uh, I was Hicks? talking to a producer and, 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 uh, and, and he pulled out a, you know, a razor and I, and I, I realized that I made a whole lot of decisions about whether I could have him working on oh. our projects. <laughs> I was just like, I was just like, you're I, right. I would have the same. If I somebody, was just like, just a word of warning. If you come in here for an interview, yeah. Have a smartphone. Are you? <laughs> I, just like, I, to, I, I don't know if you're really going to understand our market. I won't hold it against him if, well, K Shep, our, our, our chief of engineering here, he has he came in with the door, but at least he had a Palm Pre. Right. It wasn't maybe <laughs> the best smartphone. <laughs> he's, on, have, he's on his like tenths, by the way, because they break like every five minutes, apparently. Yes. I, have, I have to admit that when you were talking to Steve Martin and he talked about. Uh, doing the the screenplay for Three Amigos on an IBM Display Writer. Oh, wow! I immediately thought, but there were Apple IIe's with like Magic Window and like Apple Works and really good machines in 1982, 1983. Why were you doing? Why are you working on a computer that, that was interesting? made out of like cake and fondant? It was like yeah. it's, it's, I posted a video of a commercial for this like from 1984, and I'm like, this is clearly like a 1977 computer because it's just. There's, there's a, by the way, our, our intern Alex was, what is he using? What is that? He's showing off his, what is that, Alex? <laughs> is that a flip phone of some, some vintage? Is this your phone? Yeah, that's my phone. Wow. It's Verizon Wireless. Wow. I haven't seen one of these in, and he has a newspaper too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's paper. It's paper. Look at that. Look at this. How do you turn the pages Whoa. on that? I, you know, I, I, mm. I uh, so I, I got a USA wow. Today. In, in, uh, of course, that's because I pay him $25 a day. I mean, it's not really fair. <laughs> it's You know what? This is in pretty good shape. It's like you just got it. Now, we can laugh about these old computers, but you saw what an Apple II went for the other day. Or yeah, Apple One. Apple sorry. One for, what, $120,000, something like that? Yeah. Or more than more, that. More than $200,000. It was $210,000. 210. Yeah. yeah. 210000 bucks for an Apple One. So, you know, we hang on to those old computers and old cell phones. <laughs> well, that was they, a they, unique, there, there was some unique was, uh, features. It was touched by the Steves. It was touched by the Steves. So, uh, yeah, I, I think Steve is, Steve Martin is, uh, is, a, is, is not a Mac guy. Which, really? Which is the last thing you'd think. Really? Yeah. How is that possible? I don't know. He says, mm -hmm. and he's tweeted it recently, I'm not a Mac guy. Uh, he uses Windows with Outlook. Really? I know it's not what I would have thought. That's don't. that's fine. But Windows is a fine operating system. If you if you if you want to spend less than a thousand dollars on a computer, your answer is almost certainly going to be 
PC. <laughs> I liked well, it. Has to be right, unless it's a man. And, uh, and this is me currying favor with the great Steve. <laughs> I'll introduce. Hi, Steve. You. I'm not judging you. <laughs> I think he watches, by the way. So he's, he's he knows who you are, Andy. He's probably avoiding you, actually. Well, that, that, well, if he's even watching, then I've just blown it. Oh, well. I think we all pitch together and buy Steve a, 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 a netbook. Or, I mean, like, I, mean, I, think, a, a, had, a, look, um, I think he has everything he wants. No, he has no, three. I I'm told he has three iPads. I think that we need to suggest that he thinks a little harder about everything that he wants. I loved it, though. He said, I got, you know, if you want to move it, he's writing the three amigos. He wants to move a paragraph. He moves it, but then he gets up and goes, had a cup of coffee because the display writer takes so long to reposition a paragraph. <laughs> Uh, we've come along. Banjo way. playing. I think the B side to the Steve Martin Brothers album, uh, which is I think his last uh, album on Columbia, uh, is what really did it for me for his music. So, as I recall, those were demo tapes that he originally made in 1969, 1970, when he uh, was still like uh, pursuing the music as much as the comedy. The nitty, nitty, and here I'm Bill also McHugh establishing that I'm not just one of these Johnny Come Lately Steve Martin <laughs> fans. You know, when you meet him. I want you to do this, Andy. I want you to go, well, excuse me. I'm sure he'd he really will love, love that. that. He yeah. will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want me to do this so that you will seem cooler by comparison? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have. He'll, he'll, no, he'll just look at you and go, wow, no one's ever done that. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? For probably 10 years of his life, he couldn't walk down the street without some nitwit <laughs> shouting, hey, Steve, excuse me. PC prompt, I, I'm sorry, iPad prompts Gartner to trim PC shipment forecasts. The success of the iPad, now this story says, and other media tablets, but I don't really, I guess, well, I, I mean, it's, 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 re it's really a, a report that's in anticipation of uh, this whole thing exploding in 2011. Obviously, Apple already had a huge success with the iPad. And once uh, Android 3.0, which was which is the first version of Android that's really intended to be done on a tablet, ships, and once all these other shoes start dropping, because it seems as though every single manufacturer who was who looked as though they were going to get in the tablet game in 2010 decided to hold off until 2011 until they could figure out what they really wanted to make, it really demonstrated that not, I think this is not so much a rec, uh, as direct response to the success of the iPad, to the success of some alternative to a netbook. It seems as though it demonstrated right. that uh, the netbook is not a perfect solution for a lot of people. It was just the best solution for what was available. And once, really, they, once there are more tablets, uh, it'll become even worse. It's, for, it's, it's really for interesting how you can slant stuff with just, a, you know, just the way you phrase. Because really, if you read the article, this is from CNET, the, the title, the headline is iPad prompts Gartner to trim PC shipment forecast, which is absolutely absolutely true but they're trimming it this is for 2010 they're trimming it from something like 370 million to 352 million <laughs> yes. the number that they think that, so, it's so not, there's, there's still money there's still money to be made let's be clear. yeah if you read the headline you might go oh, i'm getting out of that pc business no 352 million units Honey, from 372, why did you so that's the fire to our Dell Tower because <laughs> I read something on the internet and I panicked. I'm sorry. Well, and that's the that's the 18 million uh, uh, tablets they think they're going to be sold. They just took those out of. They just I said think those are having a direct those, impact on. I, it probably isn't one to one. I, I think not every tablet buyer is not going to buy a PC um, or uh, is right. out of the market. Although you you got to figure somebody spends 500 bucks on a, you know, there's a limited amount of discretionary income somebody spends money a lot of money on this device they're much less likely to spend that money on a pc i mean if that makes sense right. i don't know if it's a one-to-one -one correspondence but it's maybe close to it you know paul therat had a similar <laughs> groover just ripped paul therat our good friend paul therat who hosts our windows show windows weekly because paul dared in his headline to say how can apple fix the ipad in 2011 groover said implying there's something wrong with it <laughs> it's it's true though. I mean, it, it is true. It, it probably there's nothing to fix in the iPad. I mean, is there anything wrong with the iPad? I I don't know. He's I mean, there's just, lots of things that I'd like to have added. I don't know if yeah. I'd say fix yeah. is the right word. But that just shows you. I mean, you, with with one word in a headline, you can you can imply all sorts. Create of drama. Create get people drama. to come. We get people to right. look come to your site. That's what bloggers well, do. When, an, an area that I would like to see fixed is the people who are trying to learn to publish for the iPad. Uh, and, and one example of this is, I don't know whether you've looked at this, but Time Magazine now. Uh, you can go to the App Store and you can buy a Time app. One at a time. 
It what? gives you the privilege of buying Time Magazine <laughs> one issue at a time for yeah. $4.99. Now, there are 56 issues a year, which you can subscribe to the paper version for only $20. Right. I think I think that there's yeah. I, I'm, what I'm hoping to see is we when we see the next iWork and, and, and a lot of these other things, in, in addition to cloud, you know, editing and so on and so forth, is I really feel like whether it's uh, using the Final Cut Studio or or the iWork is you said this building before. publishing you want tools Apple to make the tools. Apple should be making the tools yeah. to, to publish it because right now it is painful to publish a very interactive uh, media device, you know, media well, e content, and that's of, something that you could design. Mm -hmm. And Apple should be building that. Isn't it kind of like the web where? If you're going to make, if you're, we'll talk in a little bit about Richard Branson's uh, new project. Uh, if you're going to make something like that, you really write a content management system that right. generate and and everybody's just as on the web. There's WordPress and there's Joomla and there's Drupal. I guess it's kind of like that on the iPad. That the first step in making a magazine is writing a content management system. The advantage of doing it that way is these all look unique and different, have different capabilities. In fact, projects quite impressive. Popular science quite impressive. Uh, Time Magazine is a PDF. Uh, the New Yorker is a little more than a PDF, well, and, but not much. And, and, and when you look at something like Pages, Pages already lets you import movies. It already lets you import so you're photos. Saying they have I'm saying the that tool. They, they have all the tools there, and it's just a matter of building a solid well, publishing pipe that would let you pipe. I agree. Save and I all think that, out. that there are people who are, you know, Cat Fancy Magazine might use that to create a kind of standard magazine. But then there are going to be people like Richard Branson who say, well, I want to, wait till you see Project. I want to do something that. Is unique, but I think that, and I think you can do. I mean, I guess what I'm saying is that with with those kinds of tools built in, you would actually get more unique, uh, you know, uh, views of it because it's not it's not that it, I, I'm not looking for something that funnels it all into a template. But what I'm saying is is that is having easy to publish tools that, that anybody. So if anybody could buy iWork, for instance, right. and be able to build, you know, a crazy and add interactive features and clickable items and and design elements and so on and so forth, you'd end up with this kind of the same explosion we saw when, with Photoshop and PageMaker and everything else in the early 90s where suddenly every magazine started looking different because they didn't have to typeset it anymore. You know, and, and, it, and it became an entirely different um, ball of wax. And it was a lot of bad stuff was created during that time. And, and it finally... Um, and, but you, but, and you saw ones that were really design-heavy, like Raygun was a great magazine to look at. I don't think I ever read an article in Raygun because yeah. I couldn't. Yeah. You know, so so, but it was, um, but I think that that would create a huge explosion of content being developed for, you know, for the iPad. Let's take a break. I want to, t I want to address this. I want to show you Richard Branson, you know, the new Virgin magazine. I also, we didn't really get through these Paul's objections to the iPad, what he thinks is wrong with the iPad and what he'd like to do. And I'd like to hear from you guys what you think the next generation might include. We're starting to hear some rumors, just rumors about uh, the next gen iPad, but I presume that uh, they will they're on a yearly cycle we you know they everybody said oh there's gonna be a christmas ipad too late not gonna happen now um but i presume in either well it may be january maybe it's later they'll announce march announce well they announced in january of last of did, this they, year. did they do the, did they announce and it then in they january? shipped in what okay, april, april or may yeah. so i don't but that doesn't mean that they, they the iphone moved around there wasn't any kind of not much but it moved around a little bit right, on the announcement date moved All around right. so We'll see. But let's talk about that, the future for the iPad, what Paul Thorat thinks is wrong, what you think is right or wrong, and what you think the iPad should have. And then I would like to show you this uh, new Virgin magazine because it's actually pretty sweet. Before we do that, though, speaking of sweet, Squarespace.com. I was listening to uh, This American Life. They're also uh, talking about Squarespace. Um, it is a secret to great websites. And it's nice to have Alex sitting here because he, here's a guy who has completely adopted the Squarespace platform. I mean, you've become well, we a Squarespace use it. fanatic. It's just the one that I can that I can get stuck down on. If I want to if I have an idea of something that I want to go. So if you go to like Maybe this is the con but see this and, is and it's, a content management system. Maybe this is the yeah. kind of thing they Well, I mean, if you on. look at so if you look at like uh Border Sack, for instance, which is my my little blog, um it's uh you know, there the and I don't What is the URL? I don't, I don't uh add stuff to it often enough, but B O R D E R S A C What's that come from? Uh, it's a long story. So, <laughs> dot com. Dot com, huh? Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
Anyway, so oh, this is nice. This so, is it. Yeah, this is this is and some and of this is a some, Squarespace blog. This is a Squarespace blog. So this is um, you know, and and I put this together in three or four hours. Wow. On Squarespace, you know, I I you love know, that it, story, and I've said, I've told it a few times of you going to a restaurant saying you don't have a website of you making at the table. Yeah, <laughs> a, a website for them with Squarespace because you can do yeah, it for free. Well, you don't need a credit card, and then saying, "Hey, it's here if you want it." Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and so this is some of my my travel blogs. Is this Kilgali. Uh, uh, this that's these are all. This is from Tanzania. Tanzania. Ooh. And um, uh, and 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 you know, and so some of it's travel, some of it's whatever I want. But I but if I want to add another section, if I want to do whatever I, I want to do, we did this a few years ago with Vox, which is the yeah, late lamented, and it's gone. And but the beauty of this is it's not ad supported, so you're not you know they're going right. to be around. Right. Uh, you don't have somebody else's ads in there, which right. is great. There's me with a uh, nice. me experimenting nice with my uh, goatee. Glad you shaved uh, that off. Yeah, exactly. Me too. So um, so <laughs> my my wife looked at it. Go. Uh, yeah, you got to get rid of that. So um, uh, I was going to grow a mustache for November, and my wife said no. Yeah, it, I don't, so. it doesn't work for me. And then now, if you go to if you go to uh, if you go to pixelcore.com. Is that a Squarespace that's a blog Squarespace, also? That's a Squarespace blog as well. Yeah, I didn't know that. So, if you, so just that's to give you an idea of what's how different it yeah, is. Yeah. So, so here, go, oh, 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 I think got two peas in there. Okay. Two peas in the pod. Um, Pixelcore.com. dot com. Yeah. So here is a completely different look. Oh, whoa. Now that's interesting. It looks like Comcast has taken over my searches. Boy, I'm starting well, not so to like po uh, Comcast very okay, much. Okay. So uh, try Pixel. Let's talk. We'll talk about that. Number one. It's the number one search. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but the um, this is nasty. I'm getting off of that. Yeah. Like, so so here's a completely different look. Once again, look that at that. And I love how you put the big image there because that's yeah. really says this is what we do. And so um, Which McKay amazing. did this, by the way. By the way, oh, that's a so they got gorgeous. physical mix. So he's he's, yeah. he's molding. Anyway, so the point is, is a completely different look, a completely different layout, and uh, you know all of it, and it's all out of the same thing. It's just it's just great. It's a secret behind exceptional websites. Yep. As long as you type in a URL, type in squarespace.com. You can start your own uh, site right now for free. Just go to squarespace.com slash MacBreak and click the green Try It For Free button. All you have to do is give it a site name, a password, an email address for recovering the password, enter in the CAPTCHA, and you've got a site. Now you can start playing with it. And I'll tell you, the templates, 60-plus designer templates, but that's just the starting point. Because as you design your Squarespace blog, the Ajax interface that allows you to modify the template makes it so easy. You just drag margins around, click on this, click on that. Every site looks different without any use of CSS or JavaScript. Of course, if you're a CSS junkie or a JavaScript hacker, you can do anything because it's completely compatible to that as well. So you have, you have full control, but you don't need to have those skills to make a site that looks like a pro did it. And then you also know that it's not going to, you know, you're not going to, you're not co-lowing and, and worried about no, your server hosting. going down or whatever. So, you know, you throw, we threw up some big stuff on DB Garage is also Squarespace and, mm. and uh, we threw up, you know, four gigs of files and we know that, you know, yeah. people are going to start downloading them for Ask a Ninja and it's going to work. Yeah. One of the neat things uh, is that they, uh, it's all Java based and they use a very sophisticated uh, Java virtual server technology that makes uh, guarantees you the bandwidth. You never have to worry yeah. about your site. It's just it's re robust, reliable as can be. Now you're for hosting and the software. Twelve dollars a month. You can save ten percent if you use the offer code MacBreak. That's not just for the first month or first year, but for the life of your site. There are more features for more money. You just see what you need. You can upgrade at any time, but do use the offer code MacBreak so you save that money. Squarespace.com, the secret behind exceptional websites. If you're start starting uh, your first site or if you need a site for a special occasion, Squarespace, that's the place to go. So um, first, let's talk about Paul Therott. <laughs> and Paul's not on to defend himself, but he does have his own show, which, and he will be talking about this, I'm sure. Um, he says the iPad, too expensive, too heavy, uh, not enough power. I would disagree. I would say the iPad is perfect for, what it, what it, for the first generation. Would you guys agree? What would, would, you, would you say there was a flaw andy in the uh, existing ipad i wouldn't say so i mean too too heavy compared to what uh, not powerful again compared to what uh it's just it was designed for a specific purpose it was not designed to run every version of windows dating back to windows 2.0 uh, it was designed to run this brand new operating system that was optimized for tablet multi-touch computing he says uh, so millions of people have foolishly <laughs> I'm sorry, Paul. Foolishly jumped on the iPad bandwagon too soon, adopting a device that is too expensive, too heavy, too big, and too limited. 
That sounds like the sort of thing that Vincent Price would say from high above a laboratory castle. <laughs> Millions of people have foolishly embraced the <laughs> iPad. Well, they laughed at me and my device. Well, they shall start to weep tomorrow when I wreak my vengeance <laughs> upon the world. You know, how many people foolishly adopted Windows tablets over the last 10 years? Now, that was foolish. I am well, one they, of them, by the way. They, 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 they work well yes. for what they were, you know, they, they were, they were, promoted as like a real like every person sort of computer they actually had some success as uh, specific devices for people who need to run uh enterprise and like specific uh, like con contracted software in a tablet form so like in medicine it worked well for people who are doing lighting rigs it worked well but no it never lived up to its promise i mean i think that apple was the first person to crack it for consumers in terms of what i would like to see and i, I don't i can't think of anything specifically that apple did wrong with this first version i would like to see for instance the usb the, the usb camera adapter elevated into an actual us stop selling it as a usb as a camera adapter and start selling it as an actual usb port so that if someone wants to write a piece of software that's specifically that's designed idea. to interface yeah. like a scanner to like a, one of those little like bar scanners to it no, no, don't don't you don't even make it as complicated as we have to have a brand new sort of driver architecture for it uh but you know i would love to see things like microphones uh and like a little usb camera adopted as not as a hack but as here's something that is, that's expected now could you do that through the 30 pin i was gonna say he doesn't they don't really need to do anything just to release a better adapter or put, i mean the big drivers on the yeah. on the thing the big problem is, is that, of course, that right now with a 30 pin is that you have all this control that Apple has over what you can connect to it, which is what I really want stifles VGA, innovation. I want VGA out for everything, for instance. I want the screen out. I want out. DVI out, too. Or DVI I mean, you know, out, the, yeah. the, uh, um, I, you know, for me, the only thing that I will be bummed about when it comes out that I don't have on mine is the front-facing camera. I really, I really want to have, well, or a camera in general. I'm upgrading. Well, I'm going to upgrade. upgrade uh, yeah, I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to upgrade. And then someone else, will have, you know, one of my other kids will have a So here's what he says. Pricing. He says, wife. and I think he's right. There's some pressure now because of the new uh, Android tablets to, to drop the price a little bit. He said in today's product line, 32 gigs should be 299, 64 gigs, 399. <laughs> yeah. Not going to okay. happen, but. Yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna build some, right. you're not gonna build something like the iPad where you can drop it a foot and not even care that's gonna break because it's not gonna. For, I mean, for, they, they, they build it nice. That's, that's a but Windows guy. Bucks. That's a Windows yeah. guy, a PC guy talking. Look what happened to the PC marketplace. These companies did in fact get down to those low prices. They've got no support. They've got no margin. There's no incentive to support. There's no incentive to develop. This is not Apple's model. Apple charges a premium price, makes a hell of a lot of money on each unit, and puts that money into uh, you know, support and 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 better products, and so I think that that's just a different worldview, perhaps. He says form factor. Now, this one I might agree with him. He said it should weigh the same as the Amazon Kindle if it could. Could it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Could it? Could it be a Kindle sized? I'll, 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 if 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 Apple can acquire the company that has the patents on Flubber, that's really good. <laughs> if it could float. Yeah. Well, I think, um, for, I but for me, the battery, the battery, being able to have it run for ten hours, it's worth is a little way, weight. And size. I'll, I'll give you the way. You know, yesterday my my son spent this most of the trip from uh, I mean, L.A. on it. It's, come on, Paul, <laughs> look at it. It's it's yeah. not that big. It's not that heavy. This is a very elegant device. I, it doesn't feel or look like a first generation anything. That is yeah. that is a work of art, if you ask me. I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure. I would agree with him on that. Well, I, I think the, where yeah. he's coming from on that is that uh, some people, I might, that was the only complaint when my wife played with mine, that was her only complaint is holding it up in front of her, she thought it could be a little lighter. Right. But what I've found is you can always sit, sit it uh, in a stand or, you know what I'm saying. I mean, this uh, is, if, if, look, if, yeah. you came from, if you came from 10 years ago and you, oh. <laughs> and you saw this, Right, you'd be like yeah. magic. Well, if you came from six months ago, I, I mean, when I first saw this in January, I was blown away. In fact, remember, one of the reasons people uh, said, oh, this won't sell that well is they hadn't tried one. And when you held it in your hands, you got it immediately. It was like, okay, that's a pretty, I want one. Well, and no, I, this, I, is, this is going to change publishing. I and agree. by the way, Leo, just, uh, you know, you were talking about the tools for publishing on this and so forth. A person we might get on as a guest someday uh, because he's just gone over to an iPad version. Uh, a guy who's led in electronic publishing, in my opinion, is Brooks Jensen of uh, Lenswork. He's doing, Lenswork is, uh, is coming out in an iPad version? Yep. Wow. Now that's a monochrome, isn't it? I mean, it's a black and yeah. white magazine. That'll be very interesting. How does it look on the iPad? It looks very nice, and and by the way, he is now including color on the iPad version. Oh, interesting. 
Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But, that, but here's a guy that runs a small publishing company in Anacortes, Washington, with only four people, and he's publishing for the iPad. And his stuff it, is handmade. I mean, yeah. in, in effect. I mean, it is really... Uh, and it is interactive. He uses the audio. He uses the video. Oh, that's neat. He was doing it in um, PDF form. That's right. He yeah. was publishing PDF on uh, DVDs. Right. And so he's been a bit of a pioneer in electronic publishing. That's uh, not out yet, Lenswork, or is it? I think, I don't think it I is because I'm not I'm not seeing it on my uh, search, so I don't think it is. Okay. Out okay. Uh, well, Lenswork. It's, it'll be out shortly, because right. if it's not, I thought it was already out, but he, I know he's going there. And it'll be he called Lenswork? It'll be called Lenswork? Yes. I might have mistyped it, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep looking, but that's... Uh, yeah. That, that, if, you're, if you're into photography, that is an amazing magazine. I would never have discovered it except for you, Ray. Mm -hmm. uh, Il Fotografo <laughs> is out. <laughs> I don't think that's Lenswork. Your photographo is what I find when I search for lens work two words, and I have to find nothing. With I want there. archive when archive magazine is on the iPad. I'll, I think I'll I be think done that with that's paper. there that's is a last... future. There is a future for those kinds of uh, uh, magazines on this oh, man. device. So he's as Paul says, more storage, camera. Obviously, we need we want front facing and rear facing, don't we? Yeah, yeah. And I, and I I would be blown away if if Apple did not have a front and back facing camera on the next version. They got it. I mean, it's Samsung just, does. And I mean, the, and the, FaceTime, I, the iPod Touch has them. Yeah. Now, what about the screen? This I put a, uh, uh, a um, for TV work, I put a um, plastic cover on it. The, uh, the um, oh, I can't remember. I love the screen, a matte screen. And frankly, I would rip it off in a minute if I didn't have to shoot this because I like the glossy screen, but I know you guys aren't glossy. Yeah, I notice, I do notice, I have to admit that I do like the, the rich blacks you get when you don't right. have the matte. I used to right. complain a lot about it, and I still I still have matte stuff on some of my stuff, but I, I do well, admit, when well, I look at somebody here, who's really play rich with, Play my, my matte iPad and see. I mean, Yeah, it's just I, not, it's not it's as, the, not the blacks as, aren't, the yeah, blacks aren't I, as I, I want it to I, be I, black. I, I, I feel like, well, I, I, feel like I, just, I just took a look, and uh, Lenswork is putting out a downloadable PDF version ah. formatted. So for he's the not iPad. in the App Store. Got it. Not yet. Got it. So you right. just put that PDF on there. That's a that's a good way to do it. But actually. it is it is set up for the iPad. I'll get it. You know, in format and whatnot. Andy, you were saying? I was just going to say that I feel as though the screen protector makes the screen look a little bad all the time, right. whereas the glossy screen makes it look a little bad only a fraction of the time for <laughs> right. me. So it, it helps us for shooting. I mean, screen. you can see what a much better, you know, I don't, you don't get any reflection yep. in the shot, and that's why I leave this on. Oh, absolutely. Yep. It'd be nice maybe to have a choice, but I don't, I don't mind the, the glossy screen. I actually I, I'm, I'm a fan. I, I, Plus, I'm, I'm impressed that I've been, I've been carrying this iPad around absolutely everywhere, with all, usually without much protection on it, and it still looks pretty much factory new. Well, that's There's another thing, yeah. Or ding on the screen. It wears quite uh, well, yeah. yeah. So um, here's, the, uh, here's the Richard Branson uh, project, released last night at midnight. Um, I, you know, we've seen a lot of people do magazines now on, uh, on the iPad, and uh, with, with varying results. I think Popular Science was the, was the poster boy. I'm sorry, I keep going but, to the comment section. But it was a crazy. I didn't. I didn't. The pop, popular science one made me a little nutty. I had a hard time reading it. Uh, some have complained that the look at this. This is the front cover. It it looks like a normal magazine cover. This is where I think he's using the iPad quite effectively. Jeff right. Bridges is on the cover. They're promoting Tron, obviously, and it derezzes, and you get a bad video signal, and it and it's it really lets you know. Yeah, it's a magazine, but it's not quite a magazine. It's alive. And I think this is nicely done. There's music articles in here where you can hear the music. Um, it uses the, it, in a way, this is very much like the, um, uh, the, the uh, look at that. There's an illustration, but it's really a video, right, um, that comes alive. I think that it's there's... Cool. It, it's amazing, though. But how much money does this cost to produce? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and, and it's, 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 it's four ninety nine an it. issue, so it's yeah. not cheap. I think it's four ninety, not cheap. But look at this. I can actually, it's interactive in ways. I mean, this is a magazine. That's an ad for American Express. This is an ad. Now, right. that you got to figure that's a compelling pitch to American Express, is that we can, we can bring your ads to life here. Now I can't get out of it. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> <laughs> How much is it worth to you to leave this ad? <laughs> I want out, out, out. Um, so he's, he's, uh, it's a little navigation, you know, I guess you got to get used to it. Here's the table of contents. Um, you can scroll through uh, thumbnails at the bottom. 
Some people, I haven't really read it yet. I just got it. Uh, I don't know. Not a lot of pages, which, you, you know, is not surprising given the production. But uh, how to use project. There you go. Here's the instructions. There's an action button. There's numbered buttons. There's hot spots. There's a spine. There's a forum. There's, I like that, by the way. There's an interactive forum on all pages that you can put post comments to and read comments. This is a, I think this is the magazine reinvented in some ways. Even the how to use has a forum button, so I can leave a comment. On what I'd be really interested to see is, is something like this, where, you, where instead of a forum, it was an IRC of anyone else reading the article at the same time. Oh, I'd love that. That's kind of like Flipboard, where you could see the yeah. tweets about an article. But I mean, you could like, literally just Bring open it, it up life. and there's a little discussion. Why not? These are always connected. Yeah. Bring it to it life. Kind of call, it kind of calls back to what you were saying earlier, Alex. That wouldn't it be great if there were a common authoring a tool, uh, yeah. tool yep. not just not just so that people could get more stuff on there, but so that whenever I buy one of these magazines, I don't need to go to an instructions page to figure out how to make right. it work. Mm -hmm. Well, and also like, hey, I want to wire these interactive things into it, and being able to have those as widgets, you right. know, rather than something I have to write, would have a lot of people doing a lot of fun stuff, and theoretically, people be able to write the widgets. Nevertheless, I, 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 it's great. Look, at this thing's been out six, nine months now, right? Um, we're starting to see really innovative uses of it. Uh, it. I think it's just the beginning. And I think this, and then when we see what happens with Fox, and we see, you know, I think they're going to see a bunch of people really starting to turn this. Uh... <laughs> and now cover shoots are going to. Oh, I know what that is. Be a lot more complicated. <laughs> they're scanning him, right? That's well. It's probably getting all because they did the for Benjamin the, Button the CG yeah. thing. Yeah, which I don't know if it really. And I'll tell you in the in the in the uh, trailer, I don't know if it totally worked. Like there's well, they got they to that, make they, Jeff Bridges look young. They, they 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 got a little into the Uncanny Valley and they didn't get out. <laughs> yeah, Uncanny <laughs> Valley. You know, I have to say though, this is going to give new life to the way a magazine works because you've got a cover story about a guy, you got video. Yeah. Right. Um. I think this is really oh, so, Vanity see, Fair is gonna uh, could could you know this is what Vanity Fair ought to be doing. Yeah. We're still we're still navigating a lot of interesting questions about what how people really what people really want to get out of these magazines. Uh, I have a friend who keeps for, forwarding me really good links from the Onion, and I will always click on it if it's a text link. I will almost never click on it if it's a video link because. If it's text, I know that I can get a good overview of it in about four seconds just yep. by looking at the page. With video, I know that I've got to sit there and be patient for 10 or 15 seconds before I figure out if this is something I want. And I also got to watch some stupid ad. Yeah. Look at this. This so is kind of cool. I'm not sure how patient I would be to. Okay, so I'm looking at Jeff Bridges shifting awkwardly in the middle of the screen. And now he's uh, in, front of the, in front of the ocean. And now he's sort of strolling off to the left as the first paragraph hovers in. And I'd be like, okay. oh, God, just give me the damn article. That, I... I, I I think I could have gotten out of it. We'll see. Off to see. Now watch this, though. Look at this. I'm not necessarily saying that I'm right either. I'm saying that that's what potentially a problem. I understand. Yeah. yeah. Here's a, a, a frames, twelve frames from his movies. I tap one. The term that we used was a dance belt, but it basically was. And he's a talking about and uh, that movie. The, now I think that's freaking I awesome. I remember. Uh, reading that script and now if we could only get the licensing so that we could actually watch the video of that while he's talking well i'm pretty happy with it you know I, I, that's pretty impressive so this okay let's see this is the thing where you're saying okay i just want to read the article you go right to the article okay. you're right uh i I, th I think this is a huge step forward i i i mean it looks gorgeous i want the content uh, I'll, I'll have to see how good the content is it really looks like vanity fair and I, i'll be honest with you i think they could put vanity fair out of business Pretty darn quick, uh, and and you gotta think uh, advert. Eat my dirt. You gotta think advertisers. Says, says if I rub, rub this, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you gotta think if advertisers. Uh, they get creative. This is gonna be really. Look at this. This is a uh, this is a food. How food is becoming more down to earth with the aid of a Great Dane. Wow. You know what? That is a great cover. That's the cover to this article. Is I scrape the dirt off. <laughs> <Not perform. laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, I don't know what I do next, though. <laughs> Buy the Noma book. Again. So there's links there. This is something that Rupert Murdoch said we're never going to do is outbound links. I kind of like that, that they've actually got an outbound link section. I would love a share thing, but I guess you can't share. Oh, there it goes. You can't share it unless others have the magazine. Uh, but That's pretty it's cool. Very readable. Yeah, very readable. I always, and I have to say, this is a problem I have with a lot of magazines. I always want to pinch and zoom, and I can't because yeah. it's not a browser. You know? 
I also just want to, I, there's a lot of times now when I, what I, I want to click on that text, all the text in a magazine and just have it play audio so I can right. kind of look at stuff or look up or listen to it or, you know, I, I, I audible has ruined me. Yeah. You know where I just don't, yeah. I don't really want to read that. Yeah. I'd like to look at this pretty picture. Just tell me what that says. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really pleased that this is a crazy billionaire project though. Because with Richard Branson involved, with Rupert Murdoch involved, with you know Jeff Bezos involved, you know they're going to stick with it and solve right. these problems. Not only that, but get a, a solution they think works, but then listen a year later to find out, okay, right. we sold eight copies of this. Why didn't we sell eight million? Yeah. Let's right. let's move on to the next thing and try to figure out how to make this work. There's too many startups are just going to say, you know what, we tried that, it didn't work out, so we decided just to burn plain PDFs of the magazine edition. And if we get $8 from it a month, then we just got $8 a month from right. it. Right. It's incremental income. I'm sure this costs millions to make. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. That's called Project. It's uh, free to download the player. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and they have U.S., Canadian, and British versions. And when you buy an issue, by the way, uh, I would just uh, pay attention because I, I just clicked the first icon, and it turns out I bought the British edition. I don't know what that means, whether I'm unhappy <laughs> about that or not. Yeah, uh, in publishing magazines, one of the things I stumbled into is I subscribed to Scientific American, the PDF version, you know, which you can download and read under iBooks and right. so forth on the on the iPad. But uh, I thought, oh, well, wait a minute, let me go to uh, you know the uh, iTunes Store and see if I can get is there's an app no, for Scientific American, right. and there is. Oh, interesting. For the Brazil d edition <laughs> only. All right. Wow. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> if you've always wanted to read Scientific American in Portuguese. That's funny. You're all set. It's not showing me available issues, so I can't remember exactly how much it costs. I, by my senses, it was... Oh, here it is. Yeah, two ninety nine. That's not so bad. And then you could preview the issue before you buy, so there's, there's a way to look at it. It's a great set. It. I think this is close. Yeah, it's getting there. It's close. I mean, the thing I, the problem I have with what R Rupert wants to do, and in some ways with what this is, is it's not, it's not the web. You could do everything. Could you? I think you could do everything we're seeing here with HTML5. Mm -hmm. In fact, it may be done with HTML5 for all we know. Yes, yeah, it really is all about tools. Yeah. I keep talking. I keep talking to a bunch of different people who have smaller magazines, and the solution they want, they they love the iPad and they love these really rich media magazines you can get from them. But they really don't have the sort of money or the sort right. of resources to build great apps. They really want that company where they just send them an InDesign file or just send right. them whatever the end product of their normal editorial process is and get back a working iPad app a, a day later. I have to so. think that Apple also has limited resources and probably would like to do this. It certainly would be on my list of things to do, <laughs> but maybe they just don't have time. I, mean, I think you know, the, the problem is they're doing so hard. They're, they're having such a hard time financially. Yes, right. I think that actually exists, though. I, I get a, some of my magazines through a company called... Zeno's. Oh, Zinio. Uh, that was, yeah. yeah Zinio. Right. But, but, and, and I think, and they're, they're, they, they seem to be just the strictly paper version of it yeah. converted yeah, you, to iPad. They have that's, a tool. That's right. That's, that's, yeah. that's, what, that's what they're going to, but that's not going to push uh, iPad development for, uh, further. No. Also, Zinio, uh, the, also, it's not a distinctive mark for, uh, for the iPad because Zinio is yeah. available for pretty much every mobile device you can, you can name. Which is nice right. in that it makes these things more accessible, but people really don't think about When people think, I've got this wonderful $500 tablet, or even for Samsung people, I've got this wonderful, well, $569 tablet. But let's, let's, assume, there, let's assume there are cheaper tablets coming out. Uh, and now I'm going to really see the wonders of tablet computing. Oh, it's Scientific American, but I have to turn pages more often. Okay. Yeah. That was a fun way to spend $404. <laughs> Well, if it's but uh, if it, if the publishing price is lower and it's more convenient, see, uh, I mean, I love the fact that I can be reading Scientific American while you know sitting in bed at night, and it uh, they review a book, and I can go to uh, Kindle uh, app and buy the book and be reading it in the next two minutes. You know, yeah, I'm so over paper. I'm just like <laughs> I am like I just don't I don't even think about it anymore. I mean, I just I look at the stuff and I go, oh, I'm going to wait for that because I yeah. just, you know, I just as yeah. soon as and it what happened for me, the breaking point was Wired, which is something that I always bought. And as soon as Wired, that even though it was kind of a really clunky version, the very first one that came out, I was like, "Oh, I really don't want to buy this on paper anymore." And and the idea of having a collection of all of those things, um so I have tons of books and I have tons of audiobooks and tons of magazines all in one little thing that I'm carrying around rather than lugging all that stuff around has just made such a huge difference for me that I'm just kind of done. It does well, seem like... A, go ahead. 
Yeah, you know, one of the one of the other advantages, uh, you know, I subscribe. Same thing with Scientific American. I'd subscribe to it on paper, and when it came out in PDF, I immediately switched. But when I subscribe to Scientific American for twenty nine dollars a year, it gives me access to all of the Scientific American, or I forget, ten or twenty years of their archives. So I can go back and download a past issue, and that's pretty incredible for that price. You know, like do a search on any subject I'm looking for. They just uh, put Playboy magazine, every issue of, of Playboy magazine, on a hard drive <laughs> you could buy. On a hard drive. P appropriate. Yes. <laughs> One, it comes in a plain brown wrapper. It's really almost too much, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I did tell my wife I would like that for Christmas. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I would never, ever tell my wife that I wanted Christmas. We'll see. Well, you no. See, that, I, see, if, if I told my wife I wanted Playboy on a hard drive, I would get a lump of coal. <laughs> this, will, see, see, this, could, this could backfire on you in a serious fashion because if she says, okay, suddenly you've got a new problem on your hands. you got so you got something you're going to be thinking about for the next two weeks. Like, that was really easy and really fast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my, my, wife, there... my wife would give me a lump of coal and say, this is going to have to keep you warm for the next year. <laughs> you got your hard drive. What are you bugging me for? I gave you your hard drive. <laughs> you got your little friends. Go visit them. Cold comfort. <laughs> Oprah's favorite thing. Oh, my favorite is an iPad. And she loves, well, it might have something to do with the concurrent release of the Oprah magazine as an iPad app. Just maybe. Maybe <laughs> a little bit. Well, it's favorite. Favorite is a very temporal term. Yeah. Uh, you, you've seen the video, haven't you, of, uh, of all, the, uh, all the crazed iPad fanatics <laughs> I don't think in I the am. audience? Oh, it's pretty fun. I know you don't, you don't watch Oprah, do you? I don't. Okay, well, let me <laughs> let me yeah, they, uh, also, let me also they react the same way when they give them free soap. I know it's like free Everyone's anything. Everyone's gonna get candles. Well, you know you get you you, you, you also we're, we're you know I was on, on David Letterman. I mean you get coached about you get coached for like oh, fifteen yeah. minutes on be excited. Oh yeah, Gelman. It's kind of fun whenever I do with Regis and Kelly. I kind of like stand backstage to watch uh, Michael Gelman's uh, a warm up because it's the same all the time. So here here it is, Oprah. Oprah is announcing. I'm like, I'm gonna, I have to scroll back just a little bit. And by the way, the audio in this, I think this guy was, it's from iPhone Canada. I think he's recording it off his TV set. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to kick it off with my number one favorite But watch thing this, watch this. Ever. Oprah's number one favorite thing ever. And yeah, the audience is already like out of control. I'm sorry, the audio is so bad. Very first moment together, I knew it had stolen my heart. Kill the angel! Look at the audience. It's like Jesus Christ himself came from the ceiling <laughs> and is now blessing them all. But you know it's why? I think they realize that they're all getting an iPad under their seat. And I think that's really what the... Oprah's running in circles around the iPad, which has angel's wings on it. Angel's wings on it. I think it's her favorite thing because uh, her app is now good. Yeah, that's not what we're saying. It's, it's the it's open it's, it's, a, it's a pad with wings. It's a pad with wings. Look at this woman. I think she's... I think... <laughs> Words cannot describe what I feel for this magnificent device. And I gotta tell you... Apple, you got 90 years to go, so what you going to do to top this? I don't know, but thanks to my iPad... I'm not sure why she gave Apple 90 years to go. Does she I know wondered something? about that, too. Yeah, what on earth does that mean? You got yeah. 90 century, years left. I think it's uh, to be the best app oh, of the, the century. century. I get it, I get it. Uh, okay. I watch news on the iPad, I watch movies on the iPad, I watch TV shows on the iPad. And oh, shut up. Watch, oh, magazine <laughs> come to oh, 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 really? Oh, your magazine's on it. We have a fantastic app that moves and grows and Well, there you go. There's another, you know, obviously they, they, they believe that this is a very important uh, platform for their magazine as well. Martha Stewart has a magazine. And by the way, this is, I think, one of the reasons that I think it's important for Apple to get way ahead of the of the of making it easier to develop content so that it's developed custom for the iPad. Because I think that as more people do that, it locks them in more. Her favorite app? I mean, from a business. Scrabble. Scrabble is fun. Yeah, but Word with Friends is funner. Really? She wouldn't say words with friends, though, because I have a feeling Milton Bradley or Hasbro, whoever gave her money, 
Yeah. Don't you think? Does Word with Friends can can you do you have the little uh, can you do the little iPhone thing where you can throw? No, them? who cares? I do that all the time with my kids. Words with Friends, you play with people on the internet. I don't want to play with pe- people on the internet. Why not? Because I don't know them. I want to play. No, with my you kids. play with your friends on the internet. Your kids aren't sitting next to you right now. You could be playing Scrabble with them. Right I don't want to. Well, I play with my I'm, mom. I still I, I'm old fashioned. When I think of Scrabble, I think of us all sitting around and drinking hot cocoa and playing Scrabble. And reading our paper newspapers mm-hmm. on our I'll flip be, phones. No, I don't think I'll be more impressed with that game when it has a special mode where if you shake the iPad, you can do the thing where this you're getting mistakes. <laughs> you're cheating. <laughs> Storm uh, away. There, that's one of the things I like about Word with Friends is it, it's the final arbiter of whether that's a good word or not. So, it, and then frankly, you can't do this in real Scrabble. You can try, keep trying words, and it'll say, no, that's not a word. Is that a word? No, that's not a word. Yeah. Is that a word? No, that's not a word. So you can get, you know, you can get close, you know. What I love about the, uh, the, the Scrabble for iPad is the, um, is the fact that you can see all the two-letter words. It's very, very important. They'll show you the two-letter words? Yeah, you can just say, show two-letter words. It'll show you all the two-letter words. Is one well, I think that's that all that it'll be, show you. That should that's be illegal. All it'll show you. And then yeah. after that, you have to just kind of keep on By the guessing. way, Dr. Mom is, is crowing in the chat room. Yes, she kicked my butt in words with friends. I don't play it anymore. <laughs> I, she, she forced me out. I was beating. Who was it? Who was it that had George Bush playing words with friends, and he was trying all these? Really? Oh yeah, it was hilarious. You know, every word he tried, the thing kept coming back. Not a word. I think that's a, a joke, though, right? Not real. Oh yeah, yeah it yeah. was a joke. Yeah, it was not a joke that George Bush was at Facebook headquarters yesterday, getting interviewed by Mark Zuckerberg. George Bush was getting inter- interviewed by Mark Zuckerberg, and it was on Facebook Live. Oh, I'm so confused. <laughs> I, I don't know. George W. No, I got that. I'm just like that would. He has a new book out. I know. It just seems like a really <laughs> odd combination you know, of people I think to talk what, to each I other. I think what's happening is that the the traditional book tour where you go to you know radio and you know Good Morning Muncie and all of that stuff. No, you just go to go to Mountain View. Say hi to Mark Zuckerberg. You're out there readering. Yeah. No, you go to and Mark will interview you, and half a billion people could watch you. Yes. He has his new book, Decision Points, in which he explains that he made no mistakes in the last eight years of his... Mistakes were not made. I meant to They were not made, made. No. Hmm. He uh, uh, explains in detail why every one of them is correct. Oh, there you go. Apparently, Mark was quite um, uh, friendly. So, Mike, you know, we don't know. Maybe Mark's a Republican. I don't know what his, what his uh, politics are. It's kind of an interesting choice. But I think what it does show is how, how mainstream Facebook is, right? It's the, what is it? Is it the third or fourth largest country in the world? <laughs> <laughs> if it were a country. Well, it's got its own monetary system now. Uh, it does? Facebook dollar? The, the credits. Those credits are going to be a... Yeah, I know. You go to 7-Eleven, you can get uh, I know. The, the, get that, Farmville that, that, credits. That's credit. I don't know. Well, I mean, but the, the credits that Facebook is doing is, that's the beginning of a global monetary system. Okay, one last story. The iPhone baby quilt of the day, and then we're going to get your... Your picks. This is from a website called The Daily Want. I want this quilt. In fact, you should have this quilt. Oh, look it's, at that. It's an iPhone, and the baby likes the Facebook oh. app. Does the baby want the Facebook app, or does he want the Google I I, app? I think I have almost all those apps. <laughs> those are mostly real apps, huh? Yeah. No, no. The little, the, the little yeah. dude there, the jelly dude, my, yeah. my son plays that. That's Jelly Car, right? Jelly Car. Yeah, he plays that, like, constantly. So there's Evernote, which is nice, is on there. He Photos. Does, does ever, ever What's the green star? Do you, is that a real star. one? A little ducky? Star. There's the bicycle, which is great. I yeah. like that. B-I dot cycle. Uh, Google, Google Earth. Facebook. Facebook, I see. I don't know what the, the shapes are. Then there's the, the Jello. Yeah. The, um, the Jello guy. Jello guy. Fish. The, that peekaboo, peekaboo barn is very popular. That's real? Yes, that's real. Is that like replacing busy boxes for kids these days? So they play with it. Because I had a um, my uh, my little uh, grandnephew or nephew. I don't know what the hell he is. I don't know. Anyway, some kid was at my house, uh, like six months old. And um, I was charged with taking care of him for five minutes. I went, <laughs> so I brought out the iPad, put uh, the cat piano on there. He was mesmerized. Oh, both the kids. My, both my kids. Kids I mean, love the iPad. The, the key is, I'm really trying to make, make sure I ma- manage how many, how much time he spends on it. Because not that he, my, my son would just sit on it all day. And so, I, really, it's like not, during the day, I want him out playing. I want him to do other things. Uh, but um, when we were driving up from LA yesterday, you know, he got a little restless. I just handed him back an yeah. iPad, and off he went. And he was, he's watching. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that you hand him something that he's watching movies, and then he's playing some games, and then you hear field runners come on, and then you hear. So you you can hear what he's doing. Yeah, you can hear. You can hear what he's. I mean, once you, yeah, you can start recognizing. Him. The only the only thing is that he loves to watch the movies from Angry Birds 
which takes him to YouTube, and then the next thing we know, uh, f bombs are coming out because he's you uh, know once he's, he's in just YouTube, what's related. I he, wish you could fix that. That's on the YouTube. only. That's a real problem on YouTube. Because I because it it, it, it my, my wife was like tube. we should turn off the they need the, kid tube yeah. because then he could that that were all safe videos like uh, hooligans where it would just all be yeah. safe videos and then you could say hey have fun right, knock yourself out right. and the kid you would never have to take care of them anymore because it, 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 especially things connected to Angry Birds evidently there's angry people and then they're yelling angry things and my wife looks uh -oh. at me like is oh, he my really son allowed to have this? that stuff I listen I hear stuff coming out of the, that. The, that it's just like, what are you listening to? And he's hey, uh, laughing. Speak, speaking of YouTube, have any of you seen the uh, shopping mall Hallelujah Chorus? No. Oh, that is, I think it's one of the most priceless things on earth. They go to one of these food courts, you know, with all the little fast food places, and there's hundreds of people sitting in there, and suddenly this flash mob who's already sitting eating this woman stands up and starts singing the hallelujah chorus and then other people join I in love and those the, things it's it's a beautiful rendition of the hallelujah chorus and and the close-ups they've got of people's reactions are just fabulous i just love that when the, i love flash mobs yeah i think we just need to do more flash mobbing <laughs> in the world all right i'll Global tell you what flash mobbing. i will play that just for you in a minute but first we have to we have to do a, a commercial and then we're going to do ray you could make that your pick of the week unless you have another pick of the week <laughs> oh i have a uh, i have a, a pick of the week that's really different and important oh the audible pick of the no, week no no i, I mean a regular too. pick of the week as well oh, as okay. an audible you don't have to do an audible pick of the week usually we we, yeah. we let andy do that but i think you both have audible picks of the week so let me give you a little plug for audible first sure because I'm a big Audible fan, so much to the point where I, you know, I have two books a month. I have the uh, the, the platinum. Subscription. I look forward to long drive. I bought three more books for the trip to France because I want I don't want to be without. I uh, have Steve Martin's new book, which is great. I have uh, Keith Wichard's Life. Can't wait to hear that. And I had to get book five of the uh, Dark Tower series because I'm almost done with the. Waste you know, time. I used to I used to just barely survive ever reading a book all the way through, and now I'm listening to books twice because oh, I want to listen to that one more time. Yeah, you know, and, and I can really enjoy it and let it sink in in ways that I just never did before. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? It's awesome. Audible.com/slash MacBreak. It's what I do when I'm traveling. It's great on an airplane. I don't bring movies. I just listen. I close my eyes. I've got the uh, you know the um, the Atomotics that take out all the noise. And I'm in my own little world listening. And I could go, you know, eight hours on a plane, no problem. In fact, sometimes I wish the flight were longer. Anytime I'm commuting uh, at the gym, oh, my God, it's a lifesaver at the gym. If you want to try it out, I would encourage you to do so. Audible.com slash MacBreak. That's the website to go to. A-U-D-I-B-L-E. Audible.com slash MacBreak. You can sign up for the gold account. That's going to give you your first, uh, that's a book a month, but your first month and your first book are free. And, you know, people say, well, how is that free? Well, you can cancel at any time. So if you get the book, you can cancel the next day, and it's and it's still yours to keep. And that's the beauty of it. Audible.com slash MacBreak. And now Andy and Notco. And then after Andy, I'll give you a chance too, Ray. will give us his pick of the week because Andy's been holding on for so long. I'm, I, I'm easy. I'm mellow. Sir. He's been holding his pick, and I bet he has to go. So go. Oh, uh, well, uh, the book that I just finished about three days ago is Dangerously Funny, the uncensored story of the Smothers Brothers Comedy oh, Hour. Oh, I really want to read that. Cooley. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it, r really great book. Now, obviously, uh, as, as the title implies, it's all about the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. Uh, you get a little bit of a preface about here's here's who the Smothers Brothers are, here's how they grew up, here's how they developed their musical comedy act. But, but the entire thing is all about how this show got on the air, how... Uh, they tried to keep it on the air, and then how it finally left the air after three seasons. Uh, was it CBS? It, it was it was a CBS show, uh, and it's a legendary show in the sense that they were fighting the censors every step yeah, of the way, yeah. and they finally got thrown off the air in in a way that uh, that smacked of oh they're selling they, they're saying things about the about the government and about the, the about the, the the squares and the mainstream culture that wasn't wasn't approved and then the CBS finally found a contractual technicality that allowed them to simply not really cancel the show as much as fire everybody right. uh, and, and and get it off the air but it's more complicated than that because there were a lot of fights between the show and the censors they were saying a lot of things that 
CBS would rather they did not say because it was it made for a lot of tense things between the show and their advertisers. It made for a lot of tense situations between the show and individual affiliates, especially affiliates uh, in the South. Uh, but it's a what makes it so interesting is it's not a simple case of they were censored off the air by by a conservative uh, corporation. It was there were so many components to this, and a lot of it was you're just sort of slack jawed at. Tommy Smothers, who really wanted this adversarial relationship with everybody, there was there was no. Tommy did. did. Tommy seemed yeah. like the nice guy. Tom, Tommy was see Dick Smothers. According to the book, Dick Smothers was happy to have a successful show, and then when he wasn't doing the show, to go out and go dirt bike racing. Uh, Tommy was the more the, was the the more ambitious one of the two. Uh, to the to the extent that he wanted to produce the entire show and did, and every time that Dick tried to like have a more active role, he was really ignored, and that's why he decided, okay, you know what, I'm going dirt bike racing. If that's I can't, pretty really funny because it was space. Tommy was like mom always liked you, but he was like the sad yeah. sack on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Isn't that interesting, but 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 it's, it was interesting because like you do, you're, you're listening to this book and you're think you're thinking, wait a minute, Tommy, you know that they're they're really looking for reasons to get at you, and what you're doing is that you're intentionally trying to insult these people every single day, every single step of the way. You are, they've told you that if you have David Steinberg on and you have him do this religious commentary that we've told you not to do before, we're telling you we will not air it. Right. And, you're, and, you're, and your show is dropping in the ratings. It's not really doing well. It could be canceled at any moment just for the, just for the point of view that it's not doing exceptionally well. And your, your choice is that not only are you going to have David Steinberg back, Steinberg back on, but you're going to like steal the edited final tape <laughs> and tell them that you're not going to get this until like two hours before the air time just wow. to make sure you don't edit this wow uh, and, was, and, and that, that was and that was just like the cap of uh, two or three seasons of really interesting interactions uh so it's definitely a lesson so the, the the what i found really interesting about it is that it seemed as though if if, if tommy smothers was a little bit was willing to give in a little bit more not even i'm not even going to color it as a way of he shouldn't have been fighting these battles i'm saying that if he decided to pick his battles more carefully he might have the, the show would have gotten uh, uh, Two more seasons, which might have been enough so that with this new management and this new uh, they, 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 the show ended two years before they realized that it doesn't matter that this show is is in the middle of the ratings. They, we are selling it. We are selling a, it. It's, it's the show that everybody in the new younger demographic is getting at. And so, boy, would they have been able to coast for another three or four seasons. So it really is a lesson in like how not to win friends and influence people, because when push came to shove at the moment when the show needed some friends inside the network who would say, yeah, it's not doing very well and yeah the next administration might be breathing down our, our necks about this and yeah now there's a new chairman of the fcc who who is sort of pushing for more regulation but you know what we like the show it does important things for cbs and we like working with these people those people were nowhere to be found when they were needed and that's how the show got canceled yeah. but obviously com really complicated situation and the the bian cooley uh makes it into a terrific terrific story i love the fact that he shows this story from so many different angles it doesn't it doesn't simply there was a documentary a few years ago that I didn't like because it really did paint it as you know what they're standing up for liberty and speech and first amendment and justice and these corporate bastards and the government it's like well okay but really was that all there was to it bian cooley really does point paint the picture that they were victims of censorship and the and the uh the the, the network really should have been more open-minded but they were active participants in their own demise so i'm adding it to my next listen right now i can't wait to hear it that sounds really. You know, Tommy Smothers actually is uh, lives up here, and he's. he's Does he really? Uh, yeah, my my kids go to school with his kids. He's a uh, he's a nice guy. They were they were going to move they were going to move the whole show to San Francisco for the fourth season. Yeah. Uh, and as a matter yeah. of fact, and that's one of the reasons he's a, why he's a winery guy, a winemaker. Yep. Yeah. Neat, neat, very neat guy, and uh, and uh, really fun to have around. In fact, that was the whole. You know, they they at the school they did. Steve Martin's play, Picasso at La Panagiel, and Tommy Smothers' son, Bo, starred in it. Mm. He was Einstein. And we're trying to get Steve up to come see it, but he talked about it. It was kind of, kind of cause see, as you know, because Steve wrote uh, for the Smothers Brothers. That's how he got his start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yep. yeah. Fascinating story. Uh, let me see here. Do you want to quickly get one in here, Ray, before we get to our regular picks of the week? Sure. Uh, the uh, audible pick would be uh, Seeing in Pictures by Temple Grandin. Oh, you, uh, yes. Did you, see, you, did you saw, see the documentary? Yes. Or not the documentary, the, the movie. Yeah, the movie, yeah. 
It is fabulous. I did see it. Uh, I recorded it. I have a recording of it. Uh, and it is, uh, it is fabulous. This is a woman who was autistic and who went on to get a Ph.D., and uh, has been a wonderful voice for the autistic community because, you know, she can communicate quite effectively uh, and tell people how an autistic person thinks. And she thinks in pictures. And it's fascinating. And the HBO production is equally fascinating. But this book was actually written by her and takes you through her experiences. And it's incredible. Seeing in pictures. Yeah. Or thinking in pictures, I yeah. should say. Yeah. Temple Grandin's yeah, see, uh, latest. Well, yeah, yeah. and it's just, and, and, and definitely check out, if you haven't seen the, uh, the, the movie, the, the dramatization of it with, um, with Claire Danes, I could, it took me a half, I kept on looking for half the film. I, I kept on looking going, I know who that is and I can't quite figure <laughs> it out. Like, I was like, I know who that is. I know who that, and then finally I was like, it, it looks yeah. a lot like Claire Danes. And then, yeah. I, I mean, she just really yeah. jumped into that, into that uh, wow. uh, character. It was amazing. Is it thinking in pictures? Is that the one? Yes. I think that's it. Yes. yes. Yeah. Sorry, I made a miss. Seeing, down. thinking. Anyway, it's all right. there, folks. <laughs> Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, all at audible.com. You can get it right now by going to, well, you have to choose now. Audible.com slash MacBreak. But I'll tell you what, next month, get the other one. You're going to love Audible. It's a great way to listen on your phone, on your iPod, in your car. I listen all the time in the car. Yeah. Uh, on any, uh, any, almost any device, Android, Apple. Zune, Kindle. I love it. Uh, Audible.com slash MacBreak. Now it is time for your pick of the week. Mr. Alex Lindsay will kick it off. Check this out. Check this out one time. So, you got okay. it? You got it in your so little I got, hands? I got, you know, I, I have a lot of these headphones. And uh, many people know that I, I use uh, the ones that have, like, uh, lots of uh, flanges, you know, the edemotic. Yeah, you know, that's and, what I use. Yep. And, and, of course, the problem is, is that I really wanted ones that really fit into my ear, but they're really expensive if you buy them on their own. And I wanted it to be for my cell phone. And I, I couldn't find one that someone makes like a custom one for your ear that you can then have it for, with your cell phone, you know, for your iPhone. Right. So, uh, oh, they do. I was going to say. Well, here, so here's the deal. There's this company that I ran into at the Audio Engineering Society. Look at that. So they poured something this, in your ear there. They poured stuff in my so ear. that's not There's Ultimate be, Ears? That's somebody else? No, this is, they're called Ear Incorporated. Um, and uh, they are a little company out of, I think, Boulder. And, um, is that soft plastic or hard plastic? This is this is really rubbery. Feel See, because like. I got the ultimate ears, and it was hard, hard plastic, no, no, and it, it hurts my ear. I don't, I don't use it. I spent like this five hundred dollars for. To, I went to an audiologist, yep. got the mold made, the whole thing, and then I can't wear it because it's hard. It's really soft, and that fits and perfectly in your ear because it's molded to your ear. Yeah, and 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 so and and here's the deal though: is if you already have headphones that you like, like I had these Shures that I really liked, and they and. Um, and I wanted to yeah, use them. Ultimate Ear will do that too. They'll okay, take an yeah. existing phone. So it cost me 110 bucks. Ah! Yeah, to have these done. And they sent me the mold. So if I want more, I can send them in. Like, I don't have to do the mold again. Now I have a mold that is my ear. As long as I don't grow anymore, which I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I now have these. that, And they're like, you know, and, and they really, I mean, they really become part of your ear. Uh, they drop the um, sound going in by about 30 dB, which is really... They drop it. The, the, the sound, the external sound, when you when you stick them in your ear, is about a 30 dB drop. Um, and with the edemotics that I have, I think that they measure it out at about 20 to 22. So it's, it's a, a fair bit more um, control. And and, as, and you can you can still pop them off and put the other ones in, but I don't want to take them off because I, I really like them. So, so, so it's an overlay, in other words. So it goes on the edemotics goes, driver. Well, this one goes on my sure. So what happens is I sent them, I sent them the headphones. Oh, and they just molded it with the mold, mold, and they made it. They made but it. You custom. can't take it off. You can't. Take I can't take it off. I don't want to because I don't want to. I don't want it to get loose. I want it to stay nice and nice and. Um, but you could take it off and put the old ones back on and just keep these as inserts. Um, so they, but they, yeah, they, they customize it specifically for the, um, uh, you know, specifically for whatever headphone that you have. So if you already have headphones that you like, you already spent some money on, you're only paying for the inserts. You're not paying for the drivers and everything. They'll make them too. They make these as well. They make uh, hearing aids and, you know, custom stuff and everything else. But for $110 to have them, you know, build this custom mold for my for my ear. Because I, you know, you had talked about it. And I, I and spent I, $500, of course. And it was hard. It was hard, and I can't. These are it. soft and comfy. And, but but did you get the fancy box with your name on it? Uh, I didn't get a fancy box. See, with that's my name what on. I paid I got for. A, I got a nice. I got a really nice little uh, um, soft case for it. You know, it's which funny. I like a lot. I I've got the fancy box with my name on it. I saved that, but there, I don't know where the headphones. Went. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
It's a so, nice box. <laughs> it's a great box. That's my five hundred dollar empty box. <laughs> Not that he's bitter. They so were anyway, hard. Now, yeah. I don't know. So, see, I don't. I put these in. I was worried about worried about that. Ultimate Years is where all you know Bono yeah. wears and all the musicians. Right. But I wanted that because that's what I'd had before. And they, they have crazy colors. And I mean, you you can really choose like a thousand different you know um, you know all these different colors. And again, you can do them for your yeah. For your, I think somebody you know. stole mine, but the joke's on them because it's not going to fit them. Exactly. It's not. Doesn't really work. <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's yeah. a good deal. So he, say again the name of the it's company. Ear Incorporated. Ear Incorporated. Um, well, that's where I'm going yeah. next. Ear Inc. Dot. And I could just put it in the Ultimate Ears box, and then everybody will be happy. Exactly. Everyone will think that. <laughs> except, except for the guys at Ear Incorporated, and they'll be like, "What? Why is we, it an Ultimate Ears box? Great. We made your nice." Ears. And they will make them. You can say, "I want, I want." You, you can have them all custom made, and then, then oh, that's going to get you into the five hundred to eight hundred thousand. Yeah. Went to an audiologist. They did the whole thing. Right. And then it didn't fit. <laughs> so I went back to the audiologist and he said, oh, yeah, we didn't give you the tongue depressor. You're supposed to... I just talked because we, we actually... so on, if you Because yeah, your, your ears are, have a different shape when your mouth is open. Right. And so you want it to fit that way. When they, were, when they were putting the mold in, I thought that he was actually getting some into my jaw. I mean, it was it was really deep. And, but the uh, we shot a video. It does. It um, makes you gag, doesn't in it? In the next week or two, we'll have a video of me getting the mold uh, on Gear Media Tech. So if you go to Pixel.tv, oh, you'll, that'll you'll see be, that. You'll that'll see be exciting. A little syringe. And, and now it's time for another pick. <laughs> this one from Mr. Ray Maxwell, right? Well, my pick of the week this uh, week is uh, Topaz. You know, I'm yes. a big fan of Topaz filters. Well, they've yes. released a new filter. They notified me about this week, and of course, I ran out and tried it out because you can download Good timing, it, folks. any of their filters. And this filter is called In Focus. This is a Photoshop, Lightroom, etc. filter. And it is very interesting. You know, there have been tons of so-called sharpening filters. Right. And basically what a sharpening filter does is it looks at an image, and anywhere there's a sudden transition from light to dark, uh, what it will do is it will emphasize that transition. It'll make the area around the transition, the dark part darker, the light part lighter. And that gives you the illusion of additional sharpen sharpness. Now, this in-focus filter has a sharpening adjustment that does exactly that, but it has something else that's very, very different. When your image is blurred because of your lens or because uh, of motion, uh, it is in mathematics, it's doing what's known as a convolution. And so they have a mathematical algorithm that does deconvolution. And so it will make a wow. picture sharper. Look at that. And it's pretty incredible. It did, I mean, they have an out-of-focus picture of a kid coming out, and, and it looks like it's in focus now. Yeah. So you could actually – are you saying you could save a, a focus out-of-focus picture? If it's not too far. I, I found that it does have its limits. It, it won't do, you know – absolute magic but if you're slightly out of focus oh from uh, this is totally like csi it is yeah. and it's on sale by the way for 30 bucks right now yeah oh my goodness but it is a d it will correct focus not just put in sharpening you know in other words uh overshooting can you do that somebody's saying oh i could do that in photoshop can, can you do that in no. Photoshop? no no you cannot the, the you can sharpen in focus in photoshop and that is doing just what I described. It's, it's making, you know, it ring, it overshoot anywhere there's a transition from dark to light or light to dark. But this actually does not have to do that trick to make the image sharper. You know, if nothing else, this tells me, because a lot of times I'll go through when I get, a, you know, a roll back in Lightroom and I'll delete it. If the picture's out of focus, even if it's a great shot and the composition's great and it's just slightly yeah. blurry, I'll throw it out. Yep. Well, I even if I'm not going to buy this, I think there's a message yeah, it, here. It, yeah, <laughs> do, you know, <laughs> times change. Things You can do things down the road. I just thought there's no way you could fix that. Right. Does, does, not does only that, is, is this will increase your depth of field as well. Wow. Topazlabs.com in focus. 30 yep. bucks right now. Did you have a question, yep. Andy? No, Ray, I was just going to ask, does it matter whether it's uh, out of focus because of being out of focus or does or motion blur like will it put anything into it, focus you tell it which it is and it will uh -huh. it will do the mathematical algorithm for either 
That's so interesting. that's pretty so incredible. I, I've, been go, I've been going through like a, a few hundred shots I took at, at New York uh, Comic Con a couple months ago. And some, if I threw out a shot, it's because it's really, really dim in there. I had to use like one twentieth of a second shutter for just about everything. Uh, and it's just enough out of focus to say, no, it's not in focus. I can't use that yep. one. So Isn't that, that's, it's a heartbreak. Okay, uh, you're, you're getting 30 bucks out of me. So that's, <laughs> Isn't that it's, it's on your head. You can try it for 30 days and it doesn't limit how, you know, you can actually use it the full version for 30 days uh, oh, for dude. free. Great. So download it and try it. If it doesn't do what you want it to do, don't buy Great it. Tip. Oh, dude, I'm so totally downloading this. Oh, my God. <laughs> I kind of wish uh, we had saved Ray for the last tip, actually, because <laughs> nine looks like a piece of crap. But go ahead, Andy. <laughs> <sighs> Your turn. Okay. Mine is... <laughs> now, see, I normally don't review cases uh, because I mean, for God's sakes, it's a pouch full, pouch made out of leather right. with a strap and I, pockets on it. Same philosophy. And you put yep. your device in it and carry it around. Yeah. But then some, t you know, every now and then, like someone will send me a press release or just like uh, an email about this new case they've built, and it seems interesting enough. They said, "Okay, fine, send me one." And then I'm like, "Okay, this is a, this is a pretty good case. I think I want to tell people about it because it's a good case." Uh, it's a it's a it's a unique case for the MacBook Pro, both the fifth, both the uh, smaller and the larger size, and it is carved out of it is a slip Ooh. case. Made out of, it's a uh, wooden pouch. Exactly. It's it's like if you went to like a library in 1953, <laughs> and they let you use one of their notebooks. That's so it's cool. like this is what it would be in. It That's is so cool. It is just it is just an. A, a, a oak slip case made out of like with hand rub like tongue oil uh the instructions say to clean it just you know use furniture <laughs> furniture polish and furniture wax on it now you'll notice that it doesn't have like mounting points for like uh, any sort of like you know like shoulder straps or anything it really is just a slip case but oh my god it is so cool uh, and you just no undo kidding. the snap and if it, it, it's slide your computer slides out really nicely it's lined in felt so it's not, it'll be nicely protected. Uh, when you put it back together, it snaps with a lovely, reassuring snap like that. So when you walk into the meeting with this tucked under your arm, you will be doing so with a certain amount of authority, I think. Uh, and it's not dirt cheap, but it's not uh, it's not stupid expensive. It's like 129 bucks, I think. Uh, this is the 15 inch model uh, that I have right here. Uh, and this is this is clearly like guys the. Folks are like having an interesting business model. Uh, it drives in a burlap sack in a nicely fitted uh, cardboard box with a, a, a congratulations on a welcome to the welcome to the family of black box case owners. But and you normally just sort of toss this aside. But I took a look at it. And my God, you can't. You there's no way you can really see this, but this is like a fully like letterpress done <laughs> card. <laughs> I'm sure you won't be able to see it, but like it is a letter. The entire it's beautiful thing is letterpress. Well, they might as so, well, you know. These so yeah. So these people are really interested in making pretty and interesting things. They're nuts. Uh, <laughs> they're nuts. But before they and they're having fun doing it. They're crafty nuts. Exactly. They're 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 merry pranksters. They're merry funsters. Uh, and so, uh, I like as I it. said. Uh, this is especially for like this, uh, like November, December, because this is might not be the sort of thing that you would buy for yourself. But when you see a picture of this, you're like, I hope that someone thinks enough of me to buy this for me for Christmas, because I think it's really, really pretty. And I would like to own one of these. Uh, so you can go to blackboxcase.com and order these. They're not available for every single model of, uh, of MacBook out there. Uh, right now, it's just the Mac, the two MacBook Pros uh, that are it's available for. But really, if you if you were if you were holding this in your hand, I mean, it just is a lovely thing. Just even just as a it has a couple of uh, uh, bumpers uh, at the bottom here. So clearly it's kind of designed so that I think that you would want to like leave this on the corner of your desk so that people can draw really good conclusions about the sort of person you are and what kind of taste. <laughs> You're very woody. Uh, Exactly, nice earthy sort of person. I'm, I'm, I'm technologically oriented, but still I appreciate the classic finer things such as <laughs> hand-built craftsmanship. The strap, as a matter of fact, is fine Corinthian leather, hand tanned by a Tuscan method that has been fallen into disuse since the 1870s. But very few people would appreciate that sort of coldering, which is and <laughs> oh, Rosa, Rosa, more sherry, more sherry, yes. I think, more sherry. Yes. My uh, my pick is a book. It's kind of boring. I almost don't want to do it. 
It's kind of. We uh, love you, Leo. Yeah, it's kind of dull. <laughs> kind of dull. I I uh, I am a big fan of Ruby, which is a programming language uh, that is just very elegant and beautiful, and it's being used quite frequently these days in uh, web programming. Ruby on Rails kind of did that from uh, David Hanmeier Hansen, who uh, was at uh, uh, is at Thirty Seven Signals and. Uh, uh, so if you're doing web programming, it's great. But Ruby is great on the Mac. In fact, the Mac comes with Ruby installed. It comes with uh, an older version of Ruby installed. The current version of Ruby these days is um, is uh, 1.9. And uh, there is a classic Ruby book called Programming Ruby uh, from Pragmatic, uh, the Pragmatic Programmers. It's probably the, you know, they call it Pickaxe. It's kind of one of the definitive Ruby books. And because it's the 10th anniversary of Ruby, they're offering it for $10 right now. This is a thick-ass book. Uh, with a, I mean, really is. It's like three inches thick. It's fantastic, and uh, and I have to say, it is it is if you're learning Ruby, a fantastic way to do that. I know Alex, you're kind of into programming. Yeah, and I and the uh, I think that they do ebooks. They, they're they really do ahead. ebooks. They, they EPUB yeah. or um, you know, they have all the formats: EPUB, PDF, or Mobi. If you want to put it on the Kindle, right? And EPUB so for the iPad. They do great books, and it's and they're really you know. Um, Cost effective. I yeah. mean, you know, and, and you get a real good value with what they're doing. Well, and as I said, I offers. typically will buy the book uh, in electronic form, which right. I have. But ten dollars for the print edition is like, you know, a hundred percent. It's it's yeah. a fifty dollar book. Yeah. So if you're interested in Ruby and you want to use the new Ruby, this is a, I I already ordered it. it. Should come in the next couple of days. It's a great deal. But this is a great company to know about. They uh, they uh, write some of the best programming books out there. The Pragmatic yeah. Bookshelf and. Uh, I know you have the uh, Aaron Hillegas uh, book on programming for the uh, iPhone, but you know one of the things you can do with Ruby is uh, AppleScript. There, there's a there's an OSA library so that you can instead of writing in AppleScript, which I find kind of opaque and weird, they mm -hmm. tried too much to be English. Uh, Ruby is just a very great programming language. It just gets I, out of the way, and I like it a lot. I, I, I agree with you. I, I uh, took a couple of uh, one of the keynote presenters at uh, the Mac Tech Conference was talking about. It was one of the lead people, I think, on Mac Ruby, and he was just giving a really good walkthrough demo of why it makes so much sense to do a lot of your Apple Script stuff in Ruby. Uh, Ruby, yes. not only not only because of what you're talking about, where I love Apple Script and I use it all the time, but there's so many times where you think that you know what, instead of letting letting me write an English sentence like the name of the folder that is selected why don't you just tell me what words are important because i'm going to get tripped up in three months right. time when it turns out that the is is causing the interpreter to screw up right but yeah i mean the the, the things you can do with ruby it, it was such an interesting demo uh, that i sat in on two other sessions just to learn more about it i've yeah. been le learning bits and pieces of it ever since it's an easy language to learn because it really gets it's just very straightforward there's no semicolons no white yeah. space doesn't matter none of the things that you know the python can drive people crazy with white space. Uh, Perl could drive people crazy with semicolons. Uh, Plus, there's, there's so there's so many modules you can load in that if it's almost anything that you, yeah, it's it's a little bit like Automator in the sense that before you start writing the module that's going to turn uh, turn a take a photo take a JPEG and turn it into a 240 pixel Lomo. <laughs> vignetted picture it's like before you do that yourself gee i wonder if someone's already done that and you find a library that oh there's lomo 4.0 okay good just <laughs> one right. line of include and then suddenly one line in your script and actually right works. right i like it's nice isn't it yeah anyway just a, a little plug for ruby and a, and a good book to get there are a lot of great ruby books and in fact there's a lot of online documentation that's free you probably don't need to spend a lot of money for that but uh, uh i love ruby i love rails and um this is a great way to start that's our. Uh, those are our picks. I want to thank you, Ray Maxwell, for uh, joining us this week. It's always a pleasure. We'll have you back very soon. My pleasure. I guess you don't do any hang gliding in the winter. No, I'm flying my RC helicopter in the winter. Hang gliding, not hang gliding. Gliding, gliding. Gliding. You're not soaring. hanging from the glider. Soaring. He's soar. You're soaring. Yes. Thank you for being here. Ray Maxwell is at Color Guy on Twitter. If you'd like to follow him. Uh, you can see his little remote control uh, right behind him, as a matter of fact, over his uh, right shoulder there. Oh. So many switches. So Looks many cool. toggles. What does this one do? <laughs> that's, that's the thing I want to lick, Leo. Ray's a great, <laughs> yeah, really. Ray's a great a photographer, too. You ever put a uh, camera up there with a helicopter? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. man, the aerial shots. There's a yeah. video I saw of, you know, that, that um, stable platform with the four props. Par parrot. Yeah, parrot. the parrot. And they put a 5D on it. And uh, put vid shot video, and well, they didn't do, did they actually put that on a parrot, or did they put it on something like a parrot? Like a parrot, okay, yeah, a parrot like itself. a parrot, yeah, yeah, yeah. parrot like yeah, that. That particular version cost fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, a little, yeah. Well, if you're gonna put your <laughs> Canon five D on it, it better damn well work. You know, you you don't want any like accidental slippage. 
It was uh, an Alex Lindsay toy. Yeah. And but you saw those shots that they got, right? Oh yeah, terrific. Oh, amazing. It was I don't know, was it Spain or somewhere? It was some uh, it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, they're down in Southern California. We should get them to come here. The parrot people or the, no, no, the guys that do the five D five D shot. Yeah, they were talking. We were we were talking about it on Twip, and uh, they were. I got an email from them saying, "Hey, you know, come up and see us sometime." Yeah, we are. Uh, we at least Betting and I are going to launch a camera show soon, probably after uh, CES. Let us know if we can help. We'll, we'd love your help, and we have a lot of great people who are going to be involved. in Ray, I know Ray's going to be part of it because he's going to explain stuff within the new studio. It's going to be. Uh, we're going to have a lot of. Space. That's one of the reasons we're going to do is because we can now do it right in the new studio, and so we're really looking forward to that. You know why? You know why I figured how we could do this is that every photographer now wants to do video. So we're just going to have people like Trey Ratcliffe and Mickel Oland and Derek Street and Derek Story and all the great photographers that I know shoot their own segments. <laughs> and just send it. You know, Ray, just shoot it and send it to us. We'll, yeah, we'll exactly. do it, right? Yeah, you got, you right. got, the, you got the gear. It's, that's right. You know who else is a fan? Strobist. Yep. And I'd, I'd love to do some Strobist stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's going to be a fun show where we, Lisa and I will introduce segments from some of the most interesting people out there and they'll do their little five minutes and... It'll be really fun. I can't wait to do that. It's not going to be like Twip. It's going to be a how-to show. Twip is for enthusiasts. Yep. Talking about well, we're going to be yeah, we're going to be doing more. Uh, the new studio up here means that we'll be doing a lot more video for Twip as well. But I'm sure that there's ways. That both of these are going to be able to dovetail into each other fairly uh, cleanly. So it'll yeah. be good. Now I'm looking, and maybe the ten dollars sale is over for the tenth anniversary uh -oh. of Ruby. I hope that that's not the case because that's how much I paid. But maybe they've gone back to the full price. <gasps> if that's the case, I'm sorry, I teased you. But I am glad you watched the show. They just were watching the show and they're like, turn that off, turn that off. <laughs> turn it off. Alex, yeah, yeah, maybe that's it. They didn't want to send 5,000 of them at $10 each. Alex Lindsay is at pixelcore.com. Do go there whenever there's a stream. It's fun to watch Alex do his crazy work. Yeah, we're having. We're going to be doing more and more streams. We're really starting to get a hang of how to use, how to build this streaming system anywhere. Um, you know, with our mixer and everything else. So, and so cool. definitely follow him on Twitter at Alex Lindsay or follow Pixelcore at Pixelcore, and you'll get tweeted when there's another stream. And Pixelcore.com is a great place to go if you want to join that guild of multimedia artists who are doing such interesting stuff. Mr. Andy Anako is at the Chicago Sun Times where he writes the best stuff ever. He is the guy. He's the guy. There's, you know, there's others. Except no substitutes. He is the guy. You can also... Or the Anatko uh, symbol of quality. Yeah. The Anatko... I like it. You can also uh, go to his website, www.cwob.com for more. Have, having... Oh, by the way, I've, I've just been informed that I'm having some issues with people accessing cwob.com. In the meantime, try to spell my last name correctly, anatko.com, and you will get to my blog directly. You know, Andy doesn't I mean, really he, want you to read his blog, so... He, He's made it this difficult. I just, I just want to make sure you're really serious about wanting to read my blog. <laughs> you have to want to. Here's the trick, to, uh, and this is what I use every time I spell Andy's name. The first three letters, I have no idea how to spell this thing. That'll get you That'll get you far enough that you can do the rest. I-H-N-A-T-K. Yeah, it's a good one. He's also at Inotco on uh, Twitter. And, and parents, when you have a child, consider spellability, <laughs> usability, Availability of the domain and Twitter handle before like, you name that child. I, I, they I might like to, want to be I, I a like write-in candidate. <laughs> oh man, that's true. Did she win? Murkowski? I don't know. She's like, I don't know. They're still counting. They're still counting. <laughs> they finally just certified the election in California. The Secretary of State, like a month later, because it was so close. Andy. Alex, Ray, thanks for joining us. Thank you for being here. Now, you get back to work. Oh, do I have anything else to say? Oh, yeah. Twit.tv slash best of to participate in our best of. Because uh, we, we, at the end, of, at, after the, uh, you know, the week after Christmas, we don't want to have to, you know, uh, do all that work. Next week, you're going to be hosting uh, the uh, show. I'm, I'm not hosting. You're not going to be here. I'm not going to be here. Next week, I am. Al and I'm Andy's going to be hosting the show. Yes. <laughs> I, am, I am assembling an all-star panel, or at least all-stars in my mind. Oh, that's good. So, so it'll be kind of a different uh, style of Mac Break Weekly. With Again, it's going to be a theater in the round, uh, all acoustic. Uh, we're going to do some stuff from the new album, but some of the classics are just going to keep the fans happy. You're going to want to watch that next Tuesday. I'll be in Paris at Lueb. We will be broadcasting that live at 9 a.m. on Wednesday, a week from Wednesday. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Thank you all for joining us. Now you all get back. Now get back to work because break time is up. All right, let's start. They even saved my... I'm a geek and I vote. Editors. <laughs> Cut this segment out. <laughs>
All in all, it's just a another Another damn rat hole. You know, I'm going to see that with uh, Jammer B is such a god. Not only did he save all our lower thirds, he's taken me to see the wall on Friday. Where's the wall? Uh, We're going to Oakland. Oakland. Nice. Roger Waters. I hear he was in a group called Pink Floyd. Uh, it's it's the Pink Floyd, the nope. the Pink Floyd. The is it Floyd. The, is it really the Pink Floyd? No, it's not. that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I just, the you, Ohio like, State you, you can you can instantly sound unhip on any concept by saying, "I saw a movie called The Spider Man last week," <laughs> and I normally don't go for that, but boy. <laughs> <laughs>